Hello, whiskey folk. Apologies. <laughs> I have had a bit of a disaster trying to set up. I do this thing every other week on a Thursday night and it works perfectly. And tonight when I needed it to play nicely, it didn't. The live stream that I set up just would not go live. The live start broadcast button back start broadcast button would not appear. So in the end, my guest tonight um, decided that he'd had enough and just up and left. <laughs> hey, hello, my mates. No, he's oh, waiting. For goodness <laughs> sake. The, the, yeah, that was the rock. You're going to say my, my, my special guest tonight has bottled it. At which bottled point it. Yes. I would appear, my mates, and I say, yes, a bottle of 12 year old Springbank. Rose Bank. Rose Bank. <laughs> I knew there was a bank in it there somewhere. Right, so will I get the glasses up? Let's get these poured. Right, so Let's now we've not poured. even reviewed the questions or nothing. I'm yes. just going to wing it. That was very, very... Did I look stressed? I, I, I was feeling the stress. Right, so he didn't look particularly stressed, and I thought, well, this is a way out of my league. I mean, I've left be I have left behind the the fusty old bothy, and I'm in these... It's like the Starship Enterprise in here. Excuse me a second. <laughs> I was hoping that would come off with a wee poppy thing, but it hasn't. Oh. We're going to sip this for you, Mott Mates. Our actually, guess first. Now, you do say... Fantastic. You say that a, a, a dram shared is a dram to treasure or something like that. I'm not quite sure. Absolutely. You have a bit more. Thank you very much. Bit I'm having a bit less, but you have a bit oh, more. Oh, 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 thank oh, you oh, so oh, much. Oh. Thank you so much. There we go. Right, I need to... I will pop this back in the shelf, keep it out of the way. No problem, no right, problem. So. And uh, I'll welcome you in a second. The first thing I'm going to do is just quick, quickly pull up and uh, make sure I've got a chat window that I can share with you over there. So we are, we are um, recovering here. And once I do this, I'll be able to settle myself and, okay. uh, and uh, do the, the proper welcomes and everything like that. Here we go. This mic picks up absolutely everything. So every time we tap and slam this, it just it right. does pick it up. We don't hear it. Thank you for letting do. me know. Right, we've 175 in here, but there's still 30 in the other stream. So there's 30 people <laughs> sitting waiting for us to go live in the other stream. Uh, okay, I might need to just go in and delete it. Anyway, let's get this uh, let's get this chat up here, <clears> and uh, you can see at least what they are saying. Can you read that? Okay. Now oh, you need your reading glasses on. I can magnify it a bit. That's fine. I still look reasonably classy with my reading glasses. <laughs> I forgot to I forgot to bring the steampunk remote mates. The magnifying glass. I didn't should travel. have known. It didn't travel at all. I thought it'll be nice and bright lights. You know, I wouldn't have to worry about trying to sort of scan. But I can see everything now. Right, right. too. Okay, okay. Well, what we'll do is. Uh, I'll get you the, the chat up so that you can see it nice and clearly. I mean, you and I will be chatting. I've got lots of questions ready for you. Um, but Lovely. What, what I want to do is uh, is get this correct chat because you, what you're currently looking at is the old chat. Let's pop that out and get it up in a nice size. Look, Scottish Test Dummies have sent us over a wee dram already. Look at that. Oh, bless. So, Is it, is it Port Ellen or something? Is it, is it broader? <laughs> well, it says a contribution towards a Port Ellen. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, guys, thank you so much. <laughs> there you go. So these wee bubbles that pop up the top, that's mm -hmm. when somebody's sending us a wee dram. Bless. So this is all well, new to you, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Never mind me. Put that to a good cause. Put that to a good cause. Share it with people who are worth sharing it with. There's, well, there's another that? one. Read this. This is Dustin Silvestri. Right. Hello, sent, Dustin. Sent you $10 and saying, if I were a woman, I I'd throw, throw my, my panties. panties on stage. Ralph, a whiskey rocks? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, put it this way, Dustin. Uh, I won't completely wreck your moment by throwing my panties at you. It's not going to happen. I'm going to keep this dignified. Yes. It's my 10th anniversary, by the way, Mort Mates. That's why I'm here. I'm sort of leaving the bothy, spreading my wings a little bit. I happen to be over in Glasgow just catching up with the gossip and just checking that I'm not being sued by the Scotch Whiskey Association. <laughs> it's not happened yet. Fingers crossed. We're doing fine. 
I think the, the, the whiskey industry seems to be getting a little bit more used to these pesky whiskey anoraks who routinely criticize them for their chill filtration, their addition of caramel colorant, um, cosmetic tan, and the fact that they are inflating some of the prices rather stratospherically. I haven't there even went. welcomed you yet and he started already. <laughs> I wanted to get that in quick in case I forgot. Welcome everybody, welcome whiskey folks. Apologies for the bit of the hitch, there, a bit of a hitch there. I've no idea what was going on. I don't know why it wouldn't start up. Uh, it's just out to get me when it's the important things happening. But we managed to recover. We've started a new stream. Two hundred and two of you have managed to get in, and uh, and we still have, I think, a couple of people hanging out at the old stream. But we just need to kind of go back and find them and try and drag them in time from time to time. I'm just gonna say thank you to everybody for being patient and uh, and thank you for finding us. We're eventually here. We've had Brad Leclerc has given us a virtual drama as well. Brad, that's very, very generous of you, my, my friend, especially since I know that you're doing the dry week, of course, under Daniel and Rex. Doing a what? They do a dry week every quarter. Ooh. The Whiskey Tribe guys, Whiskey Vault, Daniel and Rex. What? A, a dry week? They encourage people to go every quarter to reset. Right. Now, I'd, it's, it, it doesn't work for me. I kind of just do mm. a few days. I just kind of yes. work it because what happens when I'm off it for a week, yeah. I kind of hit it with, with a vengeance when I go right, back, so. right? Guys, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. It is a very good idea. And it's something I mentioned now and again myself. I don't have a dry week as such because I would be pushing it for me. But I do have about three days, two if I'm desperate, where I'm completely dry. Uh, and don't even have a tiny wee dram. But I'll tell you what I have found from experience. If I go to bed uh, to benefit from health um, inducing sleep, yes, and I am still cold, stone cold sober, I don't get the quality of sleep. I absolutely don't. Even half that in a dram. Do you find it just chills you out? It helps I, you relax? I, I find that I get deeper, more sustained, unter uninterrupted sleep even from a very modest amount. It doesn't happen with rum, Roy. Uh, it doesn't happen with rye, uh, but it definitely happens with whiskey and with bourbon. That's interesting. I have to I have to say, I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. If I've been careful and I just have a dram, a wee dram, two drams, I tend to almost exclusively have a really nice, mm -hmm. good night's sleep. Let's, go, let's, go, through, let's go through all these... Uh, a, uh, virtual drums that are flying in quickly and just to say thank you to everybody. Brad, thank you so much. And he's even mentioned there, stay strong, fellow Dry Week folks. We yes. can do this maybe. I wish you the very, very best, Brad. Go for it, guys. And thank you for your virtual dram. Also, one came, Hot in the Heels came in from Hoyt Temple. You know Hoyt as well. He's a yes. he's a fan of yours as well. Two of mm -hmm. my favourite whiskey folk. Happy 10th, Ralphie. Thank you very thank much, Thank you so Hoyt. much. And I'm looking forward to welcoming you in Scotland when you get here this year. Finally, mm -hmm. Hoyt. Malted Man Cave, another YouTuber, fantastic yes. guy, really enthusiastic. You know him? You know Keith? Well, I've, I've, I've kind of, I, I go, I don't say too much about it, but I go and spy. He's been telling me all folk. about, he knows you all, he knows everybody. And I go see, right, what were they up to? What are they up to? Now, I'm not going to keep it always, as you know, I just kind of stick to the bothy. On the Isle of Man in the middle of the Irish Sea, that's where my wee corner is. I do my own thing and I just get on with it. And every now and again, I surface. But having said that, I do occasionally have a wee peek round from behind my curtains and see what's happening in the real world. Not that I want to join in because I left the real world behind years ago, Roy. Um, he, he was giving me his revision, his overview of, of the Aquavite channel before we went live. It was quite fun to listen to. I'm quite, but I think we'll all be pleased to hear that you're watching at least. And maybe, Absolutely. maybe you don't engage and. And maybe we can imagine just how busy it must be for you. You're 118,000 subs now. I know it's tough just to keep up with even your own comments. We know how busy uh, that, that can be. I still don't have time to heat the place. <laughs> I see you heating this place, all these bright lights and everything. Uh, yeah, what a magnificent <laughs> studio. I'm, I'm not, I can't take my jacket off, Malt Mates, because, you know, I'd be a, in fact, I tell you what, I've got my special T-shirt on. Right. Right. Well, I reveal my T-shirt now. Yes, absolutely. Right, sure. Go for it. This is my original. Excellent. Right, so, oh, that, that's, this is an antique. No panties, though. No panties. <laughs> this is an antique. This is a wee bit of... When I left Glasgow's Whiskey Club many years ago, about 11 years ago I left it, because I moved into the Isle of Man to look after my life's affairs, um, they presented me with the Glasgow's Whiskey Club official Chanty Rassler. 
Now, you might not know what a chanty wrestler is, but shortly we will explain. Roy knows, that's why he's grinning like a Cheshire cat. <laughs> but let me turn around and, and show you the back of the... Now, this is years ago. This is what a trender, trend former I was. Can they see, Roy? It says, yep, they can see that, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> that was 11 years ago. I was that far ahead of the curve, even then. <laughs> So before you were even on YouTube, yes. you were shouting about that's that's Oh I was I was sent as the official chanty wrestler, I was sent on behalf of Glasgow's Whiskey Club to diplomatically well sort of diplomatically let distillers know when their whiskey was a little bit below the line. Now I never ever ever never ever described the whiskey as crap. Never. It's, you, one has to be tactful because producers of whiskey, it's a sensitive issue. You've got to be diplomatic. And I was diplomatic. Yes, yes. Now, sure, there are some beverages out there that are crap. However, most of them are, are, are not whiskey. When you look at what's, sure. what was bottled, luminescent green and with cannabis leaves floating in about it now because sure, it's all sure. trending and all the rest of it uh, and all the rest of it. We're actually relatively fortunate with the tremendous variety and range of whiskies. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And bourbons and ryes that are available to us. You know, there has never been more diversity and access to it yes. globally than there is now. And I, I still understand, particularly if you're in Canada and Sweden, that you're absolutely getting screwed for taxes. I totally understand that. Yes. And I know that in Australia, you get absolutely walloped with the prices you have to pay. But this is part of this kind of global global awareness that as much as we get the, we, 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 we explain what we've got available to us, what we pay for it, what we regard as good value, we get the feedback, whether it's in the comments section or whether you're doing what you do with a live stream, Roy. Uh, and I think that the caliber of communication it's something that many, many distilleries, they're not quite sure how to deal with because... And I think the landscape's changing so fast for them, mm -hmm. how they communicate their message, how they pitch their message, it's changing step uh, by step. Their consumers are changing faster than they can measure. Um, well, and, that's a very good point because there's no doubt about it. Even in the 10 years ago, there was fewer whiskey clubs um, and there was the kind of the bun the anoraks and the, there were fewer on the ground and they actually knew less but the ability of the internet to share tangible useful practical yes, information yes. very very quickly has been i'll call it for big distillers in particularly a little bit unsettling particularly the marketing departments who would like to control the message that they put out there to manipulate who they term the consumers, but you malt mates and I malt mates are customers. We have we're not consumers. That's right. We are engaged, knowledgeable, and absolutely. Hopefully, if they do their job right, appreciative consumers. Let's go in yes. and thank these malt mates who are throwing these virtual drams faster than we can. We haven't even raised a sip yet, but I need to say thank you to these guys. Please carry Keith on. Malton Man Cave, thank you so much. He said, two of my favorite people in this world. Thank you both so much for what you guys have contributed to this Scotch world. Uh, Thanks, Keith. Thanks, I'll, Keith. I'll let that go to Ralphie. And congrats on 10 years, Ralphie. Yes, thank you. Um, and then if we go further down, this is going to be tough for me to uh, to, to keep up with. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this, our baggie, our this is, baggie, yes. Our baggie is Andy Purslow. You know Andy. He's a fantastic yes, right. guy. Yep. This is brilliant. Great gig, Roy. Thank you so much. Uh, Hello, our uh, baggie. Thank you, Andy, for your virtual drama. Friend. Andy. And uh, I think I'm going to need to... It's coming in faster than I can keep up. Let's go back up. Whiskey Whistle, Mark. Um, yes. He's, he, was in, he was in Korea. He's now doing his, his gig mm -hmm. from Canada. And he said, Aquaviti yeah. and Ralphie, awesome to see you together. Ralphie, please do a Whiskey Tube channel tour. <laughs> and if you either get to Winnipeg, I'll open you a fab dram. Thank you very, very much, Mark. Thanks for your virtual drama. Hello, hello, Mark. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing because the, oh, for goodness the creators sake. are here. Cask Mate um, it just started a channel, a mm -hmm. brand new channel as well. That's Matthias, a man among men. Congrats, Ralphie. Miss uh, the pub, Roy. Hello, Matthias. Um, Zach Andrews in Texas. Fantastic oh. guy, Zach. I got to meet Zach last year when I was yep. over at the 
at the Whiskey Vault gig. This is the greatest stream ever. <laughs> it's just started. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, Zach. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Ralph, in 10 years. Thanks for starting the Whiskey Waterfall that really? we all benefit from. Yeah, that's very much how I feel as well, Zach. Thank oh. you so much, my friend. Thank you. Um, um, there's no way we're going to keep up with this. Rico, thank you so much, Rico. He's saying, Rico Danert is saying, so amazing to see the best two whiskey tubers in one stream. We are just two whiskey tubers, but I'll thank you for your very, very nice compliment and your virtual dram, Rico. Wonderful to have you in. Hello, Rico. Keep on doing your amazing stuff. And uh, I'm, have I caught up yet? George Kaplan, George mm -hmm. and Amy, Amy are wonderful uh, supporters of the whiskey yep. tube uh, community. Uh, Amy W and George Kaplan. Thank you for that whiskey wisdom, Ralphie. Glad my wife heard about the good sleep. <laughs> so there you go. You're giving them an ammunition to keep having his wee dram at night as well. It's, it's necessary. It's, you know, it's medicinal. As, look at the Greek philosophers with their cheap wine and their fancy herbs. Alcohol amplifies the soporific value of um, its ingredients. Now, look at beer with the hops in it. Hops are soporific. They improve your sleep. S natural sleep tablets contain hops. But with whiskey, one of the little subliminal benefits of malted barley is wonderful, restful, invigorating, restorative sleep. When you don't overdo it, I think. When you don't overdo it. When you're just when you when you start to feel nice and mellow, mm -hmm. that's you at your optimal spot. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. There's there's no doubt about it. The whole self aware responsibility thing is actually matured quite nicely. Excuse the the, wow, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Carry on. Um, I'm just, um, Patrick Shatka has said, uh, sending multi love. I need to catch up with this. Sending multi love from the artist yeah. studio to you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you so much. I tell you what. Hello, Patrick. So I can have a sip of this. Welcome, yes. my friend. It's wonderful to have you here. We've got a glass of water and a teaspoon. Now, I know you probably use these fancy droppers, but you've got teaspoons tonight. I provided spoons tonight. Yes. And um, you know you've done well when your name becomes a verb. So I'm giving, or I'm about to give this Lee Rosebank the Ralphie. That's about approximately four millilitres of water. It wouldn't need that much. Welcome, my friend. Cheers. Wonderful to, to have you here. Thank you. And thank you so much. Let's go back in and see. Right, so. Oh. Having a wee scroll down. A couple other names you might recognise here as well. Mm -hmm. oh, that's fabulous. Uh, Daniel Whittington. This is Daniel. We were I, just chatting about him a minute ago. I brought this because I knew you'd appreciate it. We discussed yes, I, this I very much did. I in very February. Much do. Yes, we did when we bumped into each other. This is uh, Daniel. You know Daniel. Of Daniel Hello, Daniel. Uh, of the, the Whiskey Vault, the Whiskey Tribe. Yes, Whiskey Tribe. Absolutely. Hello, guys. I've been watching your I've been watching your videos, and I must compliment you. You are the most up to date, contemporary, sophisticated, and the amount of work that goes in goes into it it puts me to shame just saying just saying he was he was bigging you up he said that you're bigging the most you advanced you've taken a concept and advanced it That's, absolutely that, that was your words um thank you daniel thank you so much for the generous donation he says grateful to be a part of this crew two of my favorite greats side by side bam cheers my friend thank you so much eric wait as well again another tuber saying for me a dry week is seven days when i don't have to wear <laughs> depends on undergarments I, I think that's an adult uh thing in the states yeah that's that's a very typical of eric and his sense of humor as well eric thank you yes. so much for the virtual drama my friend wonderful thank you graham young thank you graham no, no comment there as well but i got to meet graham in scotland last year and we're hoping to meet up again thank you for your dram hello graham i think i'm just about catching up am i bobby parnell bobby i think i got you uh yes Rafi and roy together hello. that's a real treat thank you bobby from hi Texas. bobby patrick fulmer Hello, fan of both your channels. Happy 10th, Ralphie. Hello, Patrick. Wonderful, Patrick. Thanks. Doug Chrisop as well. I watch American live streams all the time, but never thought I'd be on a live stream with Ralphie of his panties. So I'm just chuffed. Thank you, Doug. Thank you so much as well. Doug's the, a, a supporter of... The, of my panties team. are staying out of sight. Yes, very much. Yes. Right, let's wind down. I've got a couple more came in since, since I, I got these and we'll just... Uh, yeah. Guys, it's so difficult. I've I've got a moderator in tonight, and I don't know I don't know how I'm even going to consume any of the direct messages. Uh, John Baseman is in. Fantastic stuff, guys, and he's sent across a virtual dram. Thank you so much, John. Hello, John. 
Um, we've also got whiskey friend Alan, who's also got a channel. Mm -hmm. He's he's donated a virtual dram ten pounds. Thank you so much, hello Alan. Alan. Um, a Glaswegian fellow, Glaswegian Alan. Yes, down in I Manchester. Recognize, I recognise that one. Hey, we're, yeah. we're both looking at Rob. Yes, whiskey in the six. Yes, um, Ralph, well established. Yes, Ralphie. What is your favourite independent bottler? Oh my goodness, she is right. You know you made it when you have the malt mate beside you. Right. <laughs> you well, well, I have to answer that one. Favourite independent bottler. Um, it, it does vary. I originally started by going in the malt maniacs priorities list. Now, Adelphi was pretty near the top, and I've I've kind of been quite reliant on Adelphi for a while. But of course, as the age creeps up, the prices have been going up considerably. The bottler was a firm favourite of mine way back in the early days, uh, Rob, that um, that was Rayburn Wines beside the Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh. They're now really quite collectible, but I knew that the proprietor of that wine shop called Zuber, who I used to go in there to buy grappa, just uh, Carlo Gobetti grappa. Um, I didn't actually buy much whiskey, but if he happened to have any little, it was just occasionally he'd bottle a cask out the blue, uh, one at a time, and then it would just be sitting in the shelves, no advertising, no nothing, and I didn't ask anyway, so I'd end up, you know, he he bottled Port Ellen, Brora, Springbank, a lot of seriously good stuff, because he was personal friends with the, the managing directors at um, Diageo at the time. So a little bit of historical footnote, but... If you were to point somebody in the direction of a modern independent bottler, would you... Right. Or is there just too many? Because I mean, the thing is, that they're doing single casks. And mm. would, would, is there one that stands out for you for doing a? We were. I know we were talking about the Glasgow and North Star are doing great mm -hmm. things, right? North Star. Yeah. Um, well, let's but, give a shout out to North Star, who's kind of fairly recently on the block. That's that's Ian Croucher, is the proprietor of that company, who comes has the experience working previously in the industry, where he's built up good contacts, and and being a sort of young company he's still got to kind of make his reputation which he's doing very successfully by having reasonable prices and older whiskies which at times they may not be exceptional but they're very palatable and very good value for the price also some as younger bottlings i've been happy to review yes, them and buy yeah. them um i've reviewed a royal brackle actually recently which was just fantastic and the great thing this is an independent bottling don't stop me if i'm getting too anarchy here mm -hmm. but this is an independent bottling where the it's so different from the official bottlings which are sanitized they are they're neutered slightly to make them palatable to a wide range of consumers so they're acceptable they're easy access single malts whereas the independent bottlers particularly higher strength and more natural presentation they're giving these risky character casks you know casks some, really of, some of them are characterful right some of them are mm. challenging and not even in the whiskey landscape but even in the context of the distillery that it's from yeah they can be a little bit different a little bit out there and they can be a surprise mm -hmm. um, and that's the thing with single casks yes i would i would i would shout out to caden heads as well and i like a lot of the smws stuff mm -hmm. too so i would say that there, caden yeah. heads had a huge moment back in early 2000s 1990s early 2000s of course the 1970s bottlings dumpy ones yes. have become legendary for good reason because back in the days nobody was what interested in whiskey and it was basically the wee guy in the warehouse that spent all his life having a wee chug every day uh, who just had a fantastic instinct for knowing just you know for, from smell alone what was a good sound cask these right. these skills, by the way, Samaroli in Italy. Samaroli, yeah. another great example, um, and um, and signatory. I think signatory that it, it can be hit or miss, but the skill is knowing where to look online and cross reference online to get opinions and perspectives, and then to a certain extent, we all take a chance. Uh, if it's really absolutely diabolical, complain to the distillery, complain to the independent bottler. I mean, I've done that in the past. <laughs> that doesn't surprise any of us, I don't um, think. Well, I, to a certain extent, I wanted to see how they would react. I, and I have to say, it was Diageo, and they were very professional in their response. I've wow. got, have you got time for this? I would, sure. Do you want to go well, with the, I'm going to try and here? catch up quickly. I won't get, probably won't get them all, but I'll try. Luna Aaron, thank you so much, Luna. Hello, Just, Luna. <laughs> she's going to get on a subject that we all touch on. Look, she's brought it up. Just right. something to try. She's given us something towards trying the new Balblayers. 
So she's right, a, bit of a, a bit of a dig in there. Thank you so much for this stream, she says. Luna, yes. thank you so much for your virtual drum. Thank you so much. Jason, and mm -hmm. from the Mash and Drum as well. Thank you, Jason. You star. He's got his own channel as well. Mm -hmm. Just started up, but doing things very professionally. Yes. Very nice personality as well. Do you know, Jason? Um, not, not. I mean, I keep, I, I do my own thing in morning. I'm going to give you, you know. I, I'm going to give you a link to the first time he sipped an Isla whiskey. It was a Lagavulin an eight-year-old. Right, sure. And see his reaction. It's priceless. And Is it's it? the only thing that you can that you can enjoy on video. Uh -huh. Right. It's on video. It's wonderful. He's okay. saying, congrats on 10 years, Ralphie. Amazing to see you guys together. Thanks for the inspiration, both of you. Thank you so much, Jason. That's a big long list. Where's oh, coming it's, still, it's still coming in. Uh, I got Alan. I got John. But uh -huh. there's more coming in since then. I'm just trying to catch That's up without something. skipping past. It's really tricky. I've got it magnified right up so that Ralphie can read it as well. Andrew down in Australia, Prestige Liquids. Is saying keep up the great work guys i can't wait to see what you bring in the future Hello, andrew. The world. thank you andrew again just started his, his, his own channel you've started mm -hmm. a thing you know the floodgates are open now right Every, there's so many channels now and i think there's a chance that i'm missing dram sessions there's, there's more and more room for a lot of more channels because people are turning away from traditional terrestrial television which frankly is it's not that it's misinformative it's just boring when was the last time anybody saw a worthwhile whiskey or alcohol related beverage program on traditional television i know i know i know it's true and and it's and it's it's a zeitgeist thing you know people are enjoying it they're engaging with it uh -huh. our community is growing and, and like i say to everybody all of these new channels you know everybody will find their audience with the amount of channels that are out there now you need to probably have something original something to offer you need to be doing your thing well but kilted you... moose bumped <laughs> into ralphie and hope street in glasgow years ago i remember that kilted moose kilted moose was actually one of the live guests i had on the ralphie tribute i did last year is it when you hit 100k because ralphie was the first whiskey channel to hit 100 000. and last february we got a mm -hmm. community get together and i got food quig on i got kilted moose on i got welsh toro on i get scott from scotch test dummies on as well um, and we all just kind of, I'm sorry if I'm forgetting who was on that show that night, but Ralphie Shame admitted to me that he watched it afterwards and I was really chuffed about that. And I did that show with his permission. I asked him right. if it was okay to do that. First. I wasn't going to say anything, but I thought, you know, f f be being, being reasonable, I really appreciated it, guys. It was lovely. I was... You know, I thought I'll, I, I'm not I'm not going to kind of do any kind of link up. But for 10 years, I've got to do something special. I've got to push myself outside of my envelope. I've got I, to get off the I island. Didn't, I didn't bully you at all. I didn't. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. You just said, make sure you bring that 12 year old bottle of um, Rose Bank because I know you've got a few left and you won't miss it when you leave it behind. Yeah. Meet me all the same. Cheers to a couple of members of Whiskey Royalty. Oh, um. Well, let, let's go with one. <laughs> Congrats on 10 years, Ralphie, and thanks for all the great streams, Roy. Yeah, Jonathan, you star, thank is you so Prince much. Is that Prince Roy, is it? Seeing as there's one yes, member of that's, that's Prince that's Roy. Right. Yeah. Well, let's go with that. But yes, this Rosebank is absolutely delicious, Ralphie. It and it, this was a wee bit of serendipity because mm -hmm. we bumped into each other and, it, and I got a little cameo on Ralphie's extras that week. Yes. We bumped into each other at the Old and Rare mm -hmm. and I just set some of James Hope's mm -hmm. Rosebank mm -hmm. just as you appeared and mm -hmm. that, that's where it came up. And uh, and you said, oh, I've still got bottles of that, and I went, yeah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you knew exactly what to bring. Yes, they're very did. thoughtful of you as well. Absolutely, I brought two drams tonight. But what we'll have is enjoy that one, um, and then I'll introduce the next one, which will be of interest to you, malt mates. It's only just out. It's it's really quite interesting, um, and it's very good value for the price in the uk now i don't know how much they're going to ramp up the price and imports wherever you are around the world hopefully not too much uh, but it's a, a really interesting very promising distillery that's getting things consistently right yeah but in the meantime before i tell you the rosebank story when i sneaked out to the distillery to do a little bit of Sherlock Holmes snooping the closed, many distillery, years, right? closed distillery many years ago. I will explain what a chanty wrestler is. Now, a chanty is a chamber pot known in Britain as a potty. Uh, and basically, if you awake during the night and you need a pee, rather than stumble your way in the dark and potentially in the cold, because you don't have a match to light your candle, uh, to go to the toilet, and in, all, in the old days it would be outside toilets, uh, what they would have is a porcelain wide-based device underneath your bed that you'd bring out, you'd have your pee, shove it back under the bed, and that was the chanty, 
right? And in the morning, you'd go and empty it and rinse it out, and it was it was a comfortable accessory. That's what it was. Uh -huh. Now the rustler is the person to rustle something in old Scottish is to give it a shake. So when someone wasn't getting out of their bed in the morning because they were being lazy uh, and it was just too cozy under the sheets and the covers and the quilts and all the rest of it, uh, the person trying to get them out of the bed would go under the mattress, pull out the chanty and then rustle it above the person in the bed, at which point they would freak out <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that not only were they going to be covered with their own pish, but so would the bed sheets, and they'd have to sleep in it the following night if they didn't give it a wash and a dry. Right, yeah? So this is kind of stuck. The chanty rassler is the someone who does the mischief making, but there's an objective to it. Yeah. And of course, the real trick was that while they were still sleeping, you'd go out under, under the bed and you'd you'd empty the chanty and then you'd replace it with water and then you'd go and you'd go to chanty, wrestle it right above the sheets and then you'd go, oops, and you'd have a wee trip and you'd splish them and they'd go, ah, <laughs> except it wasn't pish. It was nice, clean, fresh water, but it certainly woke folk up. Still not very nice, but it's yes, not very it's nice. Better, it's better than pish. It's sure. better than pish. Uh -huh. Yes. Per Christensen, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if you dropped a wee comment in there. I'm going to have a quick look uh, just to say, yes, you did. He said, awesome, mm -hmm. a live stream with my two favourite uh, whiskey YouTubers. Hello, Per. Uh, congrats, Ralphie, with the 10 years. Ten I years, think yeah. you're in Denmark, Per, if I'm yes. going right from memory. And Donald Rance has sent over a virtual drum saying, finishing a power single cast 17 year. Good choice. In honour of the occasion. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love that the two of you have done something special and are very best members of the whiskey community we have a we have a we are well, very we were talking about how awesome a community we have well and how we need to work as a community to protect mm -hmm, how yeah. nice an environment mm -hmm, it is mm -hmm. and when the idiots do well, we didn't use the word idiot downstairs no but when they do come along we were talking about how the community takes care of it they just kind of mm -hmm. snuff it out they don't tolerate mm -hmm. people soiling the nice mm -hmm. environment that we have every now and again i will have a troll comes along someone that's maybe had a few and they just leave an awkward comment and i'm actually comfortable with that uh, I'll, I'll just leave the comment where it is and it generally if it's a one-off it remains re relatively neutral and i think that tolerance is important mm -hmm. uh, because you know we don't know people's situation and it's quite understandable after a few wee drinks you might tap in something no return you can't delete it once it's out there yes that maybe you think hang about maybe i should have left that another five minutes before i posted it so i could edit it slightly well someone's gone in well, mb one. maltman says cheers to you both and congratulations on 10 years roughly i've MB learned maltman. so much from you both oh, over the bless. years here's to many many more i years. hope i hope we've not given you some bad habits no we, we, no. we only teach the good habits we, we, we render the bad habits good yes. that's what we try to do thanks so much mb maltman thank you so, a wee Ralphie, a wee teaspoon of water in there. Yes. Well, listen, I've got a bunch of questions because mm -hmm. um, what I've done tonight is is I did a a, a giveaway recently for to celebrate Ralphie um, in his ten years, and I uh, gave away his whiskey of the year, Glen Allen Twelve. Yes. And it was won by J.K. Van Fleet, Kyle, wonderful guy from the states, and he was sure that we would find a way to get that across to him. And in the end, he came back and he admitted, he said, look, this is going to be tricky. Probably the honourable thing to do would be to turn this back to the community and get it to somebody who you can legally ship it to. I said, okay, Kyle. So I sent Kyle a wee care package mm -hmm. of stuff that I could legally ship to him. And what we're going to do <coughs> is we've turned this back mm -hmm. to redraw again. So everybody that entered originally, you will have an entry again. And everybody that donated, or sorry, contributed a question, uh -huh. And there's no way I'm going to get through all of these. I've got pages of questions here. Um, Any about Bob Blair? There is one about Blair, but will right. we tackle that one first? Why well, not? Why well, not? Because Luna Aaron brought it up. Right. Too. Um, but somebody else also brought it up as well, right. wrapped, into, wrapped into something else. Um, here we go. It's Menno. Menno is a Menno Clays, Menno Greet on the Whiskey Tribe, mm -hmm. uh, Menno Whiskey Wise Guy on YouTube. And he says, question for Ralphie, with the seemingly ever-growing whiskey bubble, the Bal Blair thing is not so fine example of what seems to me like cold hard greed. Where do you see whiskey and the industry in five years from now? So there's two questions in there. Let's cover right. Bal Blair as an example of right. 
it, would you view that as greed or do you see a justification there? Right, so to explain the situation, uh, last year I did a Ralphie Review Extras entitled The Love Letter to Bob Blair. Now, for the record, that love letter was for the distillery, not the Inverhouse marketing team who are responsible for rebranding, rebadging, and up-pricing the product. Now, in fairness, the 12-year-old, they're still at 46%, thank goodness. Um, the, the price of the 12 and the 18-year-old are really the sort of norm, but specifically it's the 25-year-old, uh, which at the moment recently has been the 1991 vintage. Yes, right. well, I mean, but, and I, I explained this on Thursday night. Obviously, mm -hmm. when we're looking at a 1991 vintage, everything in the bottle is 1991. Mm -hmm. When but, you look at a 25-year-old, there's going to potentially or, or be... Or before, or earlier. No, the, the vintage, if it's a vintage, though, it's, everything's from that year, though, right? Right. Well. And then uh, then the 25-year-old, but there's nothing, mm -hmm. there's no information that comes along with this. The 25-year-old could theoretically have older stock in there to justify perhaps, you know, a, a higher price. But Ralphie's, when he brought up that vintage bottling, it was launched at £125 in January last year. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when you reviewed it, actually, around about then. Yes. Or not long after. Yeah, beautiful whiskey. £125. Mm -hmm. Wonderful opportunity, right? We knew it was a bit underpriced, but we knew that, that Balblair is just trying to get traction, trying to get their name out there. Mm -hmm. We were happy to carry their name. And, and, and spread it and see what was wonderful whiskey, mm -hmm. wonderful quality, wonderful presentation, and great value. But then they've brought out a 25 years old, 500 pounds. 500 pounds. 500 pounds. So from 120 odd pounds to 500 pounds, that's a huge jump. Now, one of the first things I'd mention is I would not buy Bal Blair at 500 pounds a bottle. I wouldn't buy any whiskey at 500 pounds a bottle. I'm lucky I've got the advantage. I've been buying whiskey for the last 25 mm -hmm. to 30 years. I've still got a massive stash of the stuff. I am in my 10th anniversary bringing out some of these old bottles that I bought years ago, like Brewer 30. When I bought that, that was 82 pounds a bottle, 30 year yeah, old Brewer. It's incredible. You know, I, when I bought the uh, Buna Haben Old Acquaintance, it was 120 pounds a bottle. Um, now they're selling at auction for one and a half thousand. Now there's a specific reason for that, and I'll come back to that later on from my perspective. But sticking to Bill Blair, I wrote my love letter. Let's just just quick okay. place to say, Connor, thank you so much. Two of the best. Hello, my Connor. Insp my inspirations, bad influences. Sipping a red breast, twelve cast strength, nice. Yes, lovely. Congratulations, Ralphie, and lovely meeting you the past week, Roy. Yes, I was able to meet Connor. Mm -hmm. and uh, we then went along to the Glasgow Whiskey Club for a wee evening. He bumped yep. into me in the pot still, along mm -hmm. with Andy Foodquig. Mm -hmm. um, Connor bumped into us, hung out with us for a dram, and went along to the Glasgow Whiskey Club and joined us as a guest in the yep. evening. Connor, thank you so much, and it was wonderful to meet you and spend a bit of time with you as well, and I'll let you continue about your... Right, oh, Bal Blair. Um, yeah. Um, Bal Blair features in, in the film Angel's Share. Now, it really is a, a very good film. If you haven't watched, I highly recommend you do, Malt Mix, for the simple reason... And I'll mention, the, the closing scene uh -huh. is filmed outside here. Yeah. Right outside the door here. Yes. So when the wee camper van goes up the hill, uh -huh. it's, it's, that's, Absolutely. that's right. And <laughs> yeah. that's one of the beauties Sorry. of the... For folk who know Glasgow, you can actually pick out all the different locations. The East End. And, and they're all in context. Yeah. From Royston to uh, Kelvin, that the actually kept cr Charing Cross, where they get the, the big bus, the, the, the nuns bus. The motorway, that's on, right. Onto, that's onto right. the Great Western Road. Parkhead Cross. The, and, the yeah. attention to detail by Ken Loach, the film director, is, is phenomenal. And for many people, it would be lost on them if they didn't actually live in no Glasgow. The mannerisms, everything, and the, the distillery that features is Bal Blair with its Dunnage warehouses, it is the perfect example of a compact, understated, authentic distillery. Now, that's who got my love letter, because the style of Bal Blair has not been fashionable, and I sometimes, and I do wonder to myself, to what extent are industry marketing teams who do not know about whiskey piggy backing on the amplification that malt mates around the world online are giving to less well-known whiskies and then pushing the prices up. <laughs> what do you think? 
Uh -huh. I, I mean, I think it's, I said in my live stream on Thursday, I was, I, I, there was a bit of a heart sink with that announcement and I saw the new bottles and things and I thought, well, I'll get used to the branding, but let's have a look at what they've done with the presentation and the pricing and things. And immediately I was kind of sad straight away and I felt like something had perhaps moved far too quickly and greedily and cynically in the wrong direction. And I think it sends out the wrong message generally. I mean, the 25 year old is not in most of us. It's not on anybody's radar really. Mm -hmm. It's only for people with lots of money. That was maybe true for 125 pound bottling. They would, but it was good enough value for us to stand up and say, this is good whiskey presented well at good value so that we would be encouraging people to buy the O2, the O5, mm -hmm. the, the other vintages that were affordable. Mm -hmm. But I think everybody's just mm -hmm. an, an hour, in, in our, our niche, let's say, in our yeah. community, people are just going to disengage from mm -hmm. Balblair because Balblair have made a statement that they are not aiming at us anymore. Mm -hmm. They're aiming at over here, yeah. where, where there's more money. And over here is Hong Kong, and, and and places like that where the money is, where they can yeah. where they can pick them up. Well, whiskey well, Geek Ben has has sent a, a message again. Hello, Whiskey he, he Geek. Does his own content, shares his own content through YouTube under the Whiskey Geek channel. Great dynamic between you guys. Thanks for bringing the community mm -hmm. together as you guys do and paving the mm -hmm. way. Thanks, Ben. Thank you very yeah. much for your virtual drama, friend. All the content of all the contributors and interactors online is very time sensitive. It used to be relatively time sensitive and now it's more so yeah. because literally batches, it's not just the prices that changing, the sudden introduction of a whole flurry of non-age statement whiskies, which frankly, I would some of them, I would not touch with a barge pole and I'm just not prepared to recommend stuff. I, I don't want to spoil the magic. Right. After 10 right. years uh -huh. of beaming to the can. Oh yes, Glenlivet Founders Reserve. I highly recommend it, Malt Mates. Malt Mates, I don't. <laughs> he said it here. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, well, it's your show. <laughs> They're going to come yeah. for you, not for me. <laughs> well, there's there's a whiskey we, we agree on there. Certainly, that's, that's that whiskey has appeared in a, a recycled review as well, and I wasn't exactly glowing about it. Yeah. So, someone else is uh, uh, sent over. No, no, I got it. I think I got it. Yeah. Well, I'm I just about keeping was, on top of it. I'm yes. sorry. I don't know if I, I, you don't mind me interrupting you from time That's to time, all. but when these, there, I did, it was Marcus in Austria, Marcus and Christina Kreitner. Thank you so much, Hello, Mark and Christina. Yes, thank you so. Uh, he's congratulations for ten years, Ralphie, and you yeah. both for spreading the knowledge and love of the water of life. Marcus, yes. you're a star. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Listen, this is wonderful to see everybody, 357 of you in tonight. That's kind of the reason that I was keen, and Ralphie was keen too, to be a wee bit stealthy about this. Um, sort of. Because I knew bringing somebody like Ralphie into a VPUB was going to blow the doors off the place, and it's already quite difficult to manage um, the chat just now. You can see that I'm struggling. I'm struggle not... on, Roy, struggle on. Here, have, have a badge. This is this. Oh, I've can seen I... this, yes. Oh, it's out of focus, out of focus. focus it's, if you if hold it, it. Will it? A wee bit closer. Right, hang on, but I'm going to hold it this way. There you go. This is the, the bottle in a bonnet badge, 10 years malt mates, and I'm going to give you one of these badges, Roy. I'll let you stick the pin in yourself. Okay, doke. And I've got a wee bundle of it badges. Says, it says 10 years malt mates. 10 mate. years malt A wee mates. bottle of whiskey sitting on a bonnet. Yes. Now, but a wee bundle of badges, because you do the giveaways. Yes, we do. So I want you to give them away. How do we give these away? This is going to be you hectic can, to do that tonight. You can so. post them to the US. Absolutely, Customs we can. should not seize them, and the postage shouldn't be too expensive. Right, dip in there, and there's, well, there's Tomar, the first name that we see. Right. The first one is to Tomar, and to remember this. Hang on, Tomar is saying, Ralphie, please convince Roy the value of a dram of fine sipping rum. Now, good point. Good point. <laughs> Tom's a rum bully. <laughs> one, one of the things uh, uh, that slightly hurts my feelings is that when I post a rum review, a alternative, it gets about half the audience because folk are saying it's not whiskey, I'm not interested. So I uh, the, the, there are not that many rums that I would recommend for whiskey drinkers, but increasingly, particularly from independent bottlers, including Caden Heads, including Adelphi, including, well, you've got the Kill Devil, which is one of the Langs, the Langs, Hunter Lang, is it, or the other Langs? Uh, it's, Hunt, it's Hunter Lang. Hunter yeah. Lang, right. Yeah. Now, there's some... There's some really good stuff out there. Now, if Bow Blair are going to charge 
five hundred pounds for twenty five year old uh, single malt whiskey, if you can get relatively speaking a rum which is really good quality, a good example, Barbon Court from Haiti, matured exclusively in ex cognac casks. That is, as a 15-year-old, an 8-year-old, even a 4-year-old, the price is right. It will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any single malt. Fantastic. But Ralphie will bully me into trying some rum, Tom. Thank you very much for your virtual dram. And I've picked you out for one of Ralphie's little pins. Pick a name. Uh, Dustin Silvestri, thank you very much. Ralphie said, what are your thoughts on co Compass, Compass Box? And things like Heinz got weird. We chat about that. Right, Joe. Hello there, Compass Box. Um... I, I used to be a big fan of Compass Box, but I think it's the whole stylization of the bottles and all the non-age statements. It's just got a little bit overblown. It was, it really was original when it first came out, um, and I was a big fan of their their their, their nov exotic bottlings because they really had some damn good stock, and the skills at blending were excellent. Hedonism, asyla, asyla as uh, I mean, how rare to get a, a blended traditional blended whiskey at forty six percent? I think it was forty six percent, wasn't it? Alexander Perez is saying such a treat for all of us. Hello from Los Angeles. I guess no better time than the present to open up and share my ninety one Balbear sitting around. Go. Good Absolutely. choice. Absolutely. Don't keep it. Don't keep it cooped up in that bottle. Open it and share it. Just because they're selling their twenty-five-year-old for twenty for five hundred pounds mm -hmm. now, doesn't necessarily mean that all the ninety-one vintage is suddenly going to become so much more mm -hmm. valuable. And even if it does, it's meant for drinking, especially if you can open it and share it with somebody who's going to appreciate it with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. It was the surname was Pereth, and the first name was Alexander. Thanks so much, Alexander. Hello, Alexander. Pick a name for me. A name, uh, let's, any name. Let's scroll. Let's. Uh, can you read that? Let's right, Christina Zirpoli. Christina Zirpoli. We know very Christina happy to very have well. Ralphie on. Hello, Christina. Uh, just an observation that I think this is one of the quietest Aquavit has been in one of his pubs. Well, it's, don't you worry, mate. I'll get. I'll let you. I'll give you your show back in a minute. I think I'm doing my Dame Edna ever. Do you remember when she used to go in and take yeah, over the show? But that's absolutely what I hoped for. <laughs> there, there was nothing, I couldn't imagine anything worse than us sitting here opposite each other, cross-legged, right? Mm. Me sitting here with my questions in hand going, Ralphie, question number three for you. Yeah. And you sitting there kind of like it's some Wasn't really going to happen. No, exactly. Let's go. Let's grab one of these questions here. I'm right, going to so pull out Etty, the malt cask, has said. Question for Ralphie. Try and... The challenge for you is going to be to, to answer these succinctly, I guess. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. Because um, some of these questions are quite deep questions. And, right, I'll try and not to waffle. I'll leave that to my own channel. But, I mean, I for me, I'm, I'm a no curfew. So mm -hmm. you can take the time that you need to take. There's more of these coming in as well. But let's yeah. try. Let's go. Uh, if you could run an Integra distillery, where would that be? What kind of whiskey? Do you know what I'd love why? to do? You know what I'd love to do? I would love to get the keys to Lagavulin. And do you know what I would do? I would commission a large cast metal plaque that got screwed onto the outside walls of Lagavulin saying that under my watch, no caramel colorant, no chill filtration will be ever be added to this valuable single malt and it will be bottled consistently at 46% volume. And that would be my on-the-wall plaque statement of integrity to the entire Isla, Ilach, and global whiskey community. There you and go, that would be it. I so would Ralph also say in Southern Isla, um, and it would be an, an integrity bottling from Southern Isla. Now, unfortunately, we know, we both know how wonderful a distillery like the Villain actually is, but it's in the hands of a blending company who are making little uh, ingredients for their cabinet. Mm. And and some of it were fortunate drips off in order to be consumed as a single malt. Oh. That's the situation just now. And and and, and the, the owner of Lagavulin has probably won at some of the most wonderful distilleries in Scotland in its portfolio. Um, but unfortunately, to, not all mm, of them to, are there. To Diageo's credit, that I, I don't like the fact they put caramel in, but the fact that they bottle at a higher strength, the Kleinlish, for example, is yes. at 46%. Yep. Talisker's often at 46%. Um, the not all of them, but the, the, 45.8 yeah, Oban, 14 year old Oban, 
you know, they could try and get away with bottling that at eight year old or a non age statement. Yes. Well, there's a non age statement, but the 14 year old is still av available as a decent malt. And uh, since they have now put Mortlach from 50 centiliter bottles uh, back into 70 centiliter bottles, I have bought the 16 year old. It's delicious, and I'm going to review it. They've, they've, you know, they've done a Balblea and they, 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 they pulled it back again because they, they did a crazy thing, Mortlach. They did. They made, they, they jumped off a whiskey cliff, marketing wise, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, they had a floor and fauna, sixteen bot, uh, sixteen year old, and it was fifty pounds, forty five mm -hmm. pounds, and then they released an eighteen year old, one hundred and fifty seven pounds, <laughs> you know, in a fifty cl bottle, less whiskey, one year old. Uh, one year extra maturation and triple the price. Absolutely crazy. In fact, quadruple the price because we're only 50 yeah. CL. Doug Creesop is saying, Ralphie got me into rum and the rum distillers will eventually catch up. They will eventually. I would say, is that Doug, is it? That's Doug Creesop, yeah. Doug, right. I would say, Doug, that it's really, really interesting. Watch the European rum producers that are now looking towards organic rum, that are looking towards pure, unsweetened, integrity rums, where they're in a strong position in the European Union to have set standards, which is sadly yeah. missing from the wider uh, rum producers around the world. Now, there are, are individual distilleries who are showing signs of integrity, which is what I'm always happy to mention, uh, Foursquare, Foursquare in, yeah. in Barbados. <clears throat> and they're not alone. I think that the uh, Jamaican distillery, um, what's it called again? Worthy Park? I think that's fabulous style of rum. Some really, really good stuff. Um, but there's an awful lot of rum distillers out there. You just don't know what you're getting, frankly, because there's just there's no integrity standards that are tangible and visible. What they need is a massive rum community to be as whingy and geeky as we are. <laughs> it's heading that way. It's definitely heading that way. Peter, Peter, I never know how to pronounce your surname, Peter. I think it's Eakin or Eichen. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, when I pull it back up again, you see what happens, you touch it and it spins away down. Yes. Congrats on 10 years and thanks for kicking off my whiskey journey. Love from Australia. Now, it must be about 9 o'clock in the morning in Australia. Thanks, thanks so much for joining, Peter. Well, thank you for joining, Peter. G'day, mate. <laughs> Thomas S is saying it's not whiskey until it's shared. Yes. Friendships are formed and grown over the sharing of drams. Yes. And bizarrely, it, it often, as we're proving here just now, not often breathing the same air. I'm very fortunate to be able to sit here and do that with you tonight, uh -huh. but we've been able to connect virtually. That's how it happened. Mm -hmm. If you hadn't decided to pick up your camera, if I hadn't decided to do this, I guess would mm -hmm. this have happened? Yeah. But yes, a you're absolutely right, Thomas. A word of caution, uh, it's good to share your drams with friends, but share better drams with better friends. Don't waste your drams on vodka and coke drinkers give them a wee drop of blend unless break them in gently unless you're confident you can evangelize to them and convert them and make them see the the wonders of it congrats <laughs> congrats yeah. ralphie i am loving this collaboration great show guys i look forward to many more years crusaders of reviews from you both now i know who that is Do that you? is matt zittrick in, hello in, matt in texas fantastic in texas. guy had the pleasure of meeting matt last year thank you matt thank you so much for the kind words as well um, and f and I think I There's have a finally caught up once more. Mm -hmm. you, when, when I was at Bonneville in 2016, doing my world record stuff. There's a question quite a about few, that. Quite a few Texans, very good engineers, some fabulous machinery out in the salt flats. There's my friend Dwayne just jumped Dwayne, in as well. Hello, Dwayne. You know Dwayne, do you? You recognise the name, Dwayne Large. Great live show, Roy and Ralphie. Thanks to both of you for all you do for the whiskey community. It is greatly appreciated. Now, he is coming... He must be on his way to Scotland now, Dwayne. He's on his way over. He's on his way right now. Cheers, Dwayne. Thank you very much. Cheers, well, Dwayne. Yeah. Do you notice any smokiness appearing in the tail end now that this rose bank has been sitting a while? It's got that wonderful classic biscuitiness. I don't know if you're aware of this, but rose bank was a triple distilled whiskey, the same as um, Ochentoshin. And in fact, Ochentoshin is an Irish distillery in Scotland. It was set up uh, as an Irish distillery to provide whiskey to all the folk that came over from Ireland to work in the shipyards and the heavy engineering in Glasgow in yep. the 19th century. And uh, the the reason that it doesn't, it's, it's more substantial than Irish, well, more, it has got more body than many triple distilled Irish whiskies. Did they condense is, into warm tubs? 
Um, not so much that, but the, the four shorts and the feints, the entire first run out the first wash still, got pushed right through it into the second wash still. There was no cuts off the first still. Right, okay. The whole lot. Whole lot. That was the only difference. And there we, we had another wee virtual dram coming in from Alistair Gray. Thank you so Hello, much, Alistair. Alistair. Here's my five pounds towards Ralphie buying the Lagavulin distillery. You you got you you know I'd do it proud. It's not gonna happen. But and I'll tell you something else I would do. I would extend Lagavulin and I would put in a little I would I would do some feng shui, feng mm -hmm. shui divining. I'd get the divining rods out and I'd find the perfect espiriti loci for a little micro still that would be called mill malt. Mill malt. Mill malt, because I wouldn't be able to get the copyright for malt mill. Malt mill, that's right. Mil and malt. I would reinstall that little still and resurrect the legend. Thomas Ostad, that's a new name, Thomas. So nice to welcome you in. Hello, Thomas. He's, he's given us a virtual dram and he said, hi, Ralphie. And uh, Scotch test dummies. Well, I've made, a note, I've made a note, Scott. I got your message to say he wants you to try Elijah Craig barrel proof. Barrel proof. Right. Well, I, I, I try a lot, but Elijah Craig, well, funnily enough, it's been four roses that have been floating in my boat for a while, and I've had a fascination with your bottled and bond. Now, I think this is really interesting because they're so overlooked and underrated for what they are and the price they are. I'm noticing with the increasing high-end bourbons, now we're looking at a blend of maybe three bourbons, a nice little kind of rascally label put on it, and then $250 a pop. Sorry, guys, I'm not buying that. Uh -huh, that's right. The cynicism can be everywhere, right? Uh -huh. I mean, uh, the Scotch Test Dummies over in the States, they call the ACBP, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, the mm -hmm. bottle of wow. And I have to be honest, it's it's one of those epiphany whiskies for me because it taught me that bourbon can be not just engaging and delicious, but an event, mm -hmm. an absolute event. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's high ABV, but it's so, so rich. There's mm -hmm. so much flavor. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. If you don't try it tonight, I'll send you home with mm -hmm. some. And I'll send you home with some from the bottle that was given to me by Scott, mm -hmm. who just mentioned it. Tell, that tell you something about bourbon that not many people know, and that is that when a distillery wants to make exceptional bourbon, the key to their success is because they can't really, they're not going to change the spirit much. They really can't change their maturation warehouse arrangement much, but what they can have very close control over is the caliber of American oak, the thickness of that oak, the preparation of the oak, whether it is kiln dried or much more preferably, if it's air dried, the staves are left out for up to two years, even more. And, Depending where you source the oak, you get a much more variety and difference in, in, in range of flavor, in the, the intensity of vanilla notes, than people actually realize, even between 2,000 and 5,000 feet. Um, and depending which state that the oak comes from, it has a huge influence. So I just meant throw that in this in this as uh, well. What I said is the next next person to comment that pops mm -hmm. up. I'm going to I'm going to give one of your pins to. Right, sure. And uh, that name came up here. This guy Welsh, here, Welsh Toro. Yeah, you there must go. You must recognise Welsh. Actually, yeah. Welsh was on the Ralphie stream that I did a year ago. He uh -huh, was one he of was, the yeah. he, because I wanted the, some of the community mm -hmm. to come in and contribute to that live stream last year. Mm -hmm. By the way, can I just say, from me personally, I've not even had a chance to do this, but even before the stream, uh -oh. thank you. What? From me. Because there was a time when I wanted to learn about whiskey, I wanted to learn more, but you didn't want to just learn the facts, the data. You wanted, to, le sizes, you wanted yeah. to learn how the data and the facts affected the spirit. Yeah. And it's that through video format, through you and through you just sitting in front of the camera and downloading like you do, mm. that's what it that's what it I think that's what you've done for so many people. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you've done it for ten years now is Quite an mm -hmm. achievement because you've got no sign of letting up, right? I, I'm not letting up. Um, thanks for the compliment. I, t I tend to be kind of a bit dismissive because I just, just that's the sort of person I am. So I kind of go, oh, yeah, it's a compliment, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, but no, I appreciate the, I appreciate the caliber of feedback. And it's something that I acknowledge it and understand it because I, I communicate with other YouTubers 
in other subjects, whether it be fitness or health or alternative medicine or video gaming. I tend to have some contact with these guys, so I get a feedback in the wider picture of what's happening generally. And it's something that I really appreciate is that ha continuing to have something useful to say, which is only opinion. I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing my journey. And if you get some uh, something out of it, all good. Uh, and that's that's quite enough for me. But it's thanks for the compliment. No, it's, yeah. but it's it's not it's not it's it's more of just a kind of me just saying because there it had to be somebody that was out there to do it. And the fact that it's somebody who who knew and was passionate about it and had the stamina, I think, is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to keep going and keep... You've hardly been inconsistent, right? It's not like you're all over the place. You're pretty much the same character. Yeah. Just maybe in different environments with a different annual jacket. Well, but, this, is, the, this is it. It's one of the little features. It's like the malt mates, you know, hello, malty, whatever. I mean, all that started was, I mean, if you've got, do you want to acknowledge some of the folk? Yes, I missed I get, one. I missed one. You I missed one. You but did. It's, but it's trying to skim by. Uh -huh, but it's when you... When you touch it, it scrolls. Sam. Sam Zaid. Uh, Sam Zaid, yeah. Zaid. Yeah. Thanks, right. Ralphie and Roy. Congrats. Ralphie, I appreciate the whiskey education over the years. Exactly and, what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And there was one earlier, by the way, asking about two and a half times distil distillation of Springbank. Right, okay. Please do a cast strength bourbon review, Stag Jr., namely. So, right, so there's, sure. there's obviously, there's, and there's probably a demand for that now. People would like to see it. Whiskey Freedom Fraser is saying, hello, can, can, hello, Ralphie, Fraser. can Ralphie please explain the Springbank 2.5 distilled in a more like 2.81 times distilled? <gasps> I, right. I knew that I knew this was down pat. I, I forgot. Right, sure. uh, distilled in less than 60 seconds. So that's just. Uh, yeah. Mortlach does it. Mm -hmm. Ben Rennes used to do it. They don't anymore. Springbank yeah. still do it. Springbank, they say two and a half. I think it's 2.81 as well if they work out the mass. I think it's very similar, isn't mm -hmm. it? Basically, it's not quite the triple distillation. It's repassing the f the the it, part of the second distillation through a third time, and usually it's the fainter part. You see, if both Mortlach and Springbank have got something in common, they make rather rough, yeasty, um, and heavy. heavy oily, fusile new make spirit, which is not nice and clean and palatable. However, when you put that style of spirit, because it's malted barley, it's still relatively delicate despite the heavy flavors. When you put that into an active cask, you get more synergy between the spirit and the cask. A lot of modern distillers are making very clean spirit. And an example of that being done successfully is Kingsburn. Uh, because they, they're making beautiful clean spirit, but they can't use big, heavy, heavy casks because it will more quickly swamp that style of spirit. So they're using carefully prepared, say, a lot of refill bourbon, ex-bourbon casks, first fill and second fill, and then blending the two together to get a style. That is an option available. But when you're making clean spirit, it needs more gentle, systematic, measured um, maturation, whereas your heavier, I mean, Lagavulin, Mortlach, Springbank, um, Glenfarclas as well, with its direct fired stills. That heavy, heavy, intense, which I like. Yeah, I mean, because, it, does, it, it can be challenging, right? I don't think you would yeah. recommend it to beginners easily, because, no. but it, it brings it brings the weight, it brings the oiliness, earthiness, sometimes sometimes savoury notes, right? Mm -hmm. you get, sometimes you get savoury notes from these heavy whiskies, but once you get a taste for that whiskey, Ben Nevis, another another mm -hmm. good example, once you get a taste for that character of whiskey, I think it's it's something that you seek out. It's something you that becomes quite Moorish. Daniel Whittington was mentioning that, that it sounds like something similar that the guys at Balcones do in Waco. I'm not very familiar with mm -hmm. with that, but but we they uh, were. I must admit, I, I I I was following them from the very beginning because they were the first distillery in Texas in X amount of time, yeah. and the distiller is certainly a character. Um, not that I would recommend you have firearms in your office, but. <laughs> Anyway, it, it happens. It's Texas. Uh, but he, he was definitely a hardworking pioneer in pursuit of flavor. And his blue corn, his hoppy corn, which I know was very difficult to work with. But the result was when baby, I, baby, I, blue, I yeah. baby blue, I made sure I got in quick to buy a bottle because I suspected there was going to be flavors in there 
that were unique and original and I was not disappointed. It was a fantastic experience of some genuine old style, basically almost organic corn whiskey, which is hard to produce, expensive to produce. But once you experience it, it becomes a perfect foil and you, you and and point of reference from when you're tasting standard corn whiskey, which tends to be mass produced from the agro sure. intensive. It's for efficiency, sauce. for yield, for that kind of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Whereas Balconis always set up to make it was all about the product and mm. almost like how much they could make was a secondary thing. Yes. They tried to make it as good. And, as and they didn't stop with baby blue. They've produced some, some genuinely exciting um whiskies which have inspired other distillers in the, in the US to be bold because when you're bold you're noticed. Donald Rance has said another uh, another virtual dram Ralphie in your opinion Canadian hey, he's asking your opinion on Canadian whiskey. Uh -huh, yeah. I'm currently having a JP Weiser's 35 100 this is the bargain one right Good 165 dollars Canadian for a 35 year old. Absolutely and that will be very Weiser's make very good Canadian whiskey. It, it I've, I'll tell you something I find remarkable about Canadian whiskey. Apart from, I give I give you some of the lot forty. Yes, I? you did. Yes, did. Now yeah. see that lot forty, twelve year old cast strength. I had a wee drop, and then I passed it on to a professional professional gin distiller who's finding his feet in making whiskey. So he's a gin distiller, but he's, I've been asked by a distillery to make whiskey and rum and other spirits. And I'm recommending he sources in the British Isles rye and goes for it because. It's superb stuff. Canadians are far too polite for their own good and are paying far too many, many taxes uh, on the liquor. Just saying, just sharing. And I think uh, what's happening, and, and Wisers, are, are, you know, they do this as well. I mm. think it's, I don't know if it's because of the volume or whatever, but we don't seem to get a lot of it here. Is it because there isn't demand for it well, here? Well, no, because quite rightly they're keeping it at home because when they see when you see what they've got to pay for Scotch whiskey, they're going to have a, a, a re-review of their, of their own I mean, 35 years is 35 years in Canada. And th that is that is really, really good stuff. Unfortunately, there's just too few distilleries in Canada compared to what there should be, but that's down to politics. Um, but I actually have plans to review a Canadian whiskey later on this year, uh, which it's been a while, and I'm looking forward to doing it, just to remind the world that there is some seriously good stuff. But I find it ironic that decent Canadian rye gets shipped down to the US, rebadged with a silly name, and then is selling for four times the price. Yeah. I just no like names a wee, mentioned. A wee, a wee shout out to Daniel Whiskey Throttle as well. That that bottle of Lot 40, uh -huh. the 12 year old cast strength, Daniel brought it over to Scotland. He gifted it to me. There's this much left in it because within the first week of me having it, it was, it was just basically shared into smithereens of little sample bottles. I gave you one of the bigger sample bottles, actually. Oh, um, and I just you. that weekend, I just gave it to as many people as I could. Mm -hmm. I was blown away by it. Mm -hmm. thought it was a wonderful whiskey prospect, mm -hmm. and I wanted people to taste how Absolutely. engaging that the rye could, mm -hmm. could be. And then there's a, a one just come in. I've skipped past it, but I'll catch it quickly before it disappears just to say thank you to... Uh, ben Stahl, Ben. Hello, Ben. Uh, my friend of mine I met in Texas. There's yeah, so many guy. folk leaving comments here. Oh, my goodness. I Thank know. you, everybody. Thank you, Aquavita and Ralph, for the great reviews. Cheers to 10 years. We often romanticize uh, lost distilleries and expressions. Are both of you excited for the future of whiskey? Mm hmm uh, I'll tell you a story about Chip Takes. I mean, notice we comment there. Chip was the Thank you, guy ben. that started Balconis. Uh, I was invited over as a, as a geeky anoraki to um, a whiskey festival in Canada just to record some stuff and they were very very hospitable uh, and I was sitting next to um, next to Chip at the table and he ignored me all evening <laughs> I don't know what I don't know it must have been but you know he was having a really interesting conversation with other folks so I just listened and I didn't butt in or anything but he was an eccentric character Hi, Ralphie. Hi, Roy. Thank you both. Very entertaining and informative. Slant you. That's from Sven Erik Jamt from Norway. Hello, Sven. Thank you so much, Sven. Thank you so much. 
Yep. Tell you what we could do quickly because mm -hmm. this is going to be tough to do tonight with so many people in. We need to draw this. We need to get. I, I right, feel like chill. I want to. I want to be off higher. Yeah. And just sit back and relax and enjoy you. Right. Chill. This is the what the whiskey that Ralphie's whiskey of the year last year. This is the one that was already gifted to Kyle. Kyle put it back in when he realised he wasn't going to be able to get it over to him. I took care of Kyle. He's got another uh, care package on the way to him. But this is going to be redrawn again. But the the nice thing that's happened here mm -hmm. is I've got a wee silver metallic marker pen here right i'm keeping an eye on the screen here you can do that Whistle no problem. Pig rye, um I, I don't know for sure but much of it came from canada uh, i'm spotting a few names that come to my channel and leave comments so we wave i can't name you all because you're all kind of there, there is a huge overlap Duke right christophe's just donated a wee happy 10 years you got me into happy, scotches rums yeah. mezcal and integrity scotch whiskies i'm a integrity lot. yeah important i'm enough. relying on training c to tell me about canadian whiskey yes <laughs> so, yeah, they'll they'll keep you well, right. Well, Trinians here are sharing a, a lot of scotch, so they can't hog all the Canadian stuff, right? We've got to enjoy some of that as well. And um, it's quite a lot of Canadian reviewers, really quite a lot of them, mm -hmm. right? Okay, what I'm going to do is quickly, I'm going to use uh, this gap quickly. You just keep an eye on that, right? Chill. And I am going to do a uh, try my best to do a bit of a screen share here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw this whiskey, give away this prize. Mm -hmm and see uh, who is going to win. So everybody that originally entered is back in again. If you left a question, one of these questions that I have here, you have a chance as well. So let's share this. And that should, with me doing this over here, it should pop up and I'll try my best to drive it. I wouldn't even, here. I would not even attempt this. It's quite a lot of windows open, isn't it? It's I mean, a lot of windows. I'd, yeah. I'd, get, I'd get confused and it would all mess up and I'd need my steampunker. Right, so here we have the list, I've already randomized this, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what I normally do is, I, I can't see her name because she'll come alive. I, I ask my virtual assistant, okay? Right. I say, hey, Siri, and ask her to draw a, yes. a, a random number. Yes. But there's no need to do that tonight because there's someone else here with Absolutely. me. I'm not running a solo show. So I can ask Ralphie to draw a number. Yes, draw a number. But, but so Between... that we're, what we will do uh -huh. is I always randomize this. I shuffle these names mm -hmm. up. Right. But I'm going to ask you to give me a number before I shuffle it up. Right. And then everybody knows that it's all above board and whoever right, we so. draw, we draw. And I'll tell okay. you, we, we're looking for a number mm -hmm. between. They, they can't actually see us right now. They're, they're looking at this, this mm -hmm. screen. Here we go. We're right, back to so. us. We're looking for a number between one and 171 there. Yeah, Toby is in at the end. 126. Right. Let's shuffle it up then. Let's see. Who 126 is. Randomize range. Okay, that's me shuffled them all up. We can go up to 126. They can see that at home. The last drop. Now, I know that that guy's in the UK. That is Chris Moore. I know the guy. Mm -hmm. That's the last drop has won. A, Congratulations, a, Chris. Chris, well done, my friend. You've won this bottle of. Banalaki, 12 year old. Right. Which is, so that's about as fair as we could do that, right? Right, so. There's a marker pen here, a permanent marker. No, no, I've got a silver pen for you. A so, oh, a silver a one. Shape. Oh, my goodness. I use them let's, too. Uh, let's just. Yep, there's, look, there's plenty of ink in there. Okay, okay. You can sign it. Right, what about regards from Ralphie and Roy? Congrats from Ralphie. Congrats, yeah. Con. Grats. From Ralphie. I'm going to send this along as well. Uh, Bob Scully in at the Glasgow Whiskey Club and put my uh, slogan, my saying, it's not whiskey until it's shared, and he put it on a T-shirt for me. He gave me it in a large. He's going to give me a medium back again. But it means that if you think this large T-shirt will fit you, Chris, let me know. This goes with the Glenallachy as well. And okay. we'll fling in a badge. A wee Ralphie pin as well. A ten, ten years more mix badge. Oh, there we go. Well, we'll let this sit out and let it dry now because in case we've got it as I absolutely yeah. see using these pens. They're great, but watch when, if you're at a whiskey festival. If there's any humidity in the environment, it can actually take quite long to dry. And folk will tend to once you sign a bottle with these sort of pens, stick it back in the box, and then it smudges. There you go. He's actually written from Ralphie Android. Yeah, congrats. congrats. From and, Ralphie and Roy. And there will be some condensation in there and here from all our hot air, right? So. Yeah, there will be a bit. <laughs> so we'll give it an extra time to dry out. How are you getting on with that, Rose Bank? Are you ready for Oh, looks like I've missed a... 
Scotch for Scotch for dummies. That's Scotch the four dummies. guys in Ohio. No, hello uh, guys. No, they're not in Ohio. They're in uh, Indianapolis. I saw this right now. Indiana. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, Andrew, Drew, Sean, and Mark. Fantastic Andrew, guys. Drew, Andrew, Drew, Sean, and Mark. Hello. And sometimes Mike. And Mike as well. Can't right. stay for long, guys, but wanted to see these two together. So amazing. Whiskey tube forever. Thanks, boys. Thank you so much for your generous whiskey uh, virtual dram as well. And there we got Doug Chris Hope as well. Are you ready for another question quickly? Yes. Let's see what we can do here. I've, I've highlighted the ones that I thought would be really quite interesting, but there's no way I'm going to get through all well, of these. We, will we finish off the Bull Blair one? If you if you think we haven't covered it, yes, right. I think we've given Bal Blair a, a, enough of a kicking, though, don't you think? I, I, I want to say the kicking. The, it's not the distillery. The yes, love letter went the, to the distillery, not to the marketing department. One of the reasons that they've really amped the the the, the, the price up is they've misunderstood the value of what they've got. Then they've overcompensated because they're looking that their market for the older whiskey, the international market, is no longer for drinkers. It is for speculators. Now, what's happened is, I don't know if you're aware of this, when you put money in a bank, when you buy a financial investment product, you do not own that. Banks own any money deposited in a bank is owned by the bank, not by the depositor. Therefore, as more and more financial constrictions and accountability issues and tax exposure for cash and financial assets comes to the fore increasingly particularly over the last three to five years people and hedge funds professional investment companies small companies individuals people have been looking to diversify their investments into tangible collectible items that they perceive as holding their value over time and whiskey has become a very notable victim of this now whether it be old wines whether it be old motorbikes, Swiss watches, French handbags, or Italian fashion accessories. These have been commodified. That they, they are basically off the off the record. You know, the tax people don't need to know. It used to be fine art market kind of hedged all that, but now it's diversified. Whiskey's got caught up in this. Um, it's not a bubble, but <clears throat> it's going to burst, but it will deflate at some point. But what you have is a sudden international demand for aged whiskies because they're accepted as a token of tangible non-cash currency. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. And I think there's also a danger as well that so much of it, um, especially when you look at the, the ones that are kind of perceived as being collectible, and it's, it's a difficult word to <laughs> use sometimes, collectible, but they're being bought and they're being bought. And the, the, the more they're being bought, the price creeps up and up and up. And what's happened to these whiskies? They're going in cupboards. They're going in uh, lockups and lockers here and there and everywhere. So these are they're not being drunk. Mm. They're not becoming decreasing in quantity. It's inevitable that has to flow back into the market again at some point. Mm. And the, the brands, like you say, it's not a burst, mm -hmm. but the, the prices will correct themselves eventually. In a sense, it's actually quite handy that Macallan have taken the brunt of of the premiumization demand for these things because it's actually taken attention away from other good quality single malts. I, I mean, look at rums now as well, and and bourbons. I mean, Pappy Van Winkle is just it's just frankly, it's, it's not affordable. It's not the the, the whiskey can't mm -hmm. live up to the prices. It's, and it's so yeah. The, with, in this mm -hmm. instance, whether it be Pappy Van Winkle or limited bottlings of Macallan. These are no longer bottles of spirits. They are tangible, accessorized investment products. And, and that's, that's a simple fact of it. So, said Martin, your question has also been answered as well because you answered a direct question about Balblair's switch to aid statements as mm -hmm. well. Quite interesting. Uh, Christina Zarpoli asks, as someone who has been doing whiskey vlogs for years, uh -huh. Where do you see the future of the whiskey community go? This is a good change of direction. Mm, yeah. Whiskey community going for better or for worse? Well, are we following the bubble mm -hmm. or are we following it regardless of the bubble and mm. things that happens? The industry, the bubble, the the drama around it, the fee seal, the Speyside Whiskey Festival, the increasing range of of festivals in, in countries around the world relating to the local spirits. There's a whole symbiosis going on, a fusion thing going on, 
everything is influencing everything and generally it's very positive when you look at the negativity you have and say the fitness online fitness community and the very financially driven endorsements between supplement producers and fitness and the online um community and what they call influencers which is really quite shallow and patronizing um it's more to it than that uh, but i think that things are really quite positive so long as we are careful canny and spend our money wisely that's the bottom line and um if if there is this theme of appreciation of good spirits of acknowledgement and endorsement by the customer online whether they're leaving comments or whether providing comment on blogs or videos and what and for or in whatever format then then it's, it's all good because it empowers the actual producers of liquor and slightly disempowers the black art marketing spin merchants who and this is an opinion roy sure that's, that's an that's, opinion you're, you're welcome to your opinions here the problem with overpowered marketing teams is that it is financially in their interests to undermine the integrity of quality of product so that their services are more needed to sell it you see if a whiskey is really really good and it's selling then less marketing is required and therefore the people involved in marketing That's may true. get less bonuses if, when whiskey is good we people like us take care of the marketing for them because we are quite happy to rant and rave and evangelize yeah. about how great a whiskey is i'm a naive optimist at, at my core christina and i would say that I believe as a community, regardless of the cynicism, regardless of the great things that happens in whiskey, regardless of the bust and the boom or whatever happens in the, the industry and the market, I think the community is growing and we're mm -hmm. becoming more educated by technology, we're becoming more educated by shared experiences, by getting together in our clubs and whatever environments we get to share whiskey and we're understanding how fantastic whiskey is at connecting people. And I think that once people understand that dynamic, it changes their relationship with the spirit. It changes their relationship with alcohol, I think as well. Mm -hmm. It lets them taste as opposed to drink. Um, and I think that once people, more and more people learn that, especially younger generations mm -hmm. that are learning that now, I think the community will continue to grow. When I started drinking whiskey, your glass is empty. Do you want to top up? Yes, I do. Thank you very, very, very much. More, whatever, more roast bank. Whatever you deem. Is, I've brought my. Have you got, there's a drop daft milk here as well. Ah, well, daft milk can wait. Daft milk can wait. Okay. It's this the new kid in the block. Okay. We more drop of this. Um, yes, and I think that because the younger generations are getting engaged, the guys in the twenties and uh, you know women are becoming engaged as well at a younger age and learning. Um, and and I think that that bodes uh, very very well for the community in the future. But let's not get over to get. Let's not get two rosy tinted glasses. I am, about I am the this. naive optimist, right? I did. I did admit. Well, that. you've got to address and be a little bit less naive tomorrow, yeah. because there's the 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 in the industry there are pretty slick professionals, and it's all about the money. And they will plunder us for our goodwill and our uh, our endorsements and all the rest of it wherever we are, whatever we're doing, uh, and we've got to be aware of taking it being taken advantage of. Because I know that there's that there's contributors who are approached by producers, content makers, bloggers, vloggers. And then saying, oh, can we send you some of our little samples? And then all oh, before you know it, you've got some little sample bottle being sent through. Now, a journalist in a newspaper would throw this in the bin. Something that online contributors need to know is understand your value. And particularly the audience, understand the value and influence you have when you're going in and buying what you're buying because you are as visible in your comments and feedback and interaction as the people who are making content in the form of videos and blogs. Yep. And we have to be a little bit hard-nosed here when the marketing department turn up all sweetness and smiles 
and glowing and positive and oh we think it's fabulous what we're doing what you're doing you're so great you do, 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 do. ah whatever <laughs> you know i mean it just pisses me off no you've got a point it, it you've got a point me off. and i think we all need to kind of make sure that when uh, as soon as yeah. you as soon as you get offered something it feels like recognition right and it feels like oh i'm getting something for free mm -hmm. But these things are really for free. They're not for free. There's an unwritten contract, and you need to understand that, which is why I still refuse and, and, and do not accept bottles of whiskey being sent to me. And goodness knows it happens virtually every week. The Scotch whiskey industry, to its credit, understand and respect that, that status. <laughs> but there, there are folk further afield who are just desperately trying to solicit my contact details to send me stuff just a reminder folks don't bother my, my audience provide through the, the advertising through the google adsense and my patreon pals who are very pretty much appreciated they fund my self-funding hobby and i highly recommend to everybody as much as you possibly can keep your integrity and in doing so keep a respectable distance because the value we have to the customer to the fan is much more important in the long term than suking up for very little reward to these marketing professionals now, Ra some, Ralphie, of whom, some of whom can bite my bunnet Ralphie doesn't think that what he's sharing is evangelism, <laughs> but he's evangelizing. No, and he, I'm not, and, and I he's, never he's, don't he's, call it that. It's far too religious a context. It's, it's, I don't like that not, word, Roy. So I, no. I think it's wrong to, to consider no. that it can only be used for religion. I'll tell you the well, word. It's tub thumping. That's okay, what it is. Okay. I'm banging a wee drum here. But the thing is, is that when in the context of, of, of my environment, when I evangelize, there's never any religion. This is to, meant to be as inclusive as it can possibly be. I don't care where you live, what you look like, how you eat, how you pray. The whiskey encourages us mm -hmm. to concentrate on the things that unite us mm -hmm. rather than things that and, divide us. And do you think, Roy, that some people in marketing departments, now I'm not going, I'm not going to generalize too much because mm -hmm. there's, it's, it's a job that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Would you invite some of them occasionally to bite your bonnet? Uh, marketing departments. I haven't invited any yet, mm -hmm. and I see no need to invite any in the future because mm -hmm. I'm the exact same as you. I'm funded by the community. Yeah. It's and and I think the marketing departments are struggling how to grapple with that because they are. their leverage is taken away from them. That, you know, they don't have the thing to offer for something in return anymore. Mm -hmm. So what they have to do is go off and just concentrate on mm -hmm. making as good a product as they can make. It's not only that, but that there are people within the whiskey industry do approach online content makers and just ask them excuse me what's actually trending and what's actually going on why are people not visiting our expensive websites to which the answer is because websites are a little bit old-fashioned now they're useful they are a, a nodality they are a, a hub but You've got to ask yourself, what is the integrity of your content on Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube, and on Twitter? Not yeah. so much Facebook now, but certainly on Instagram. Sherry Maldrams is saying, bite my bonnet. And I noticed Eric Waite saying that he's constantly having offers of people sending him hair products. Now, Eric is uh, as bald as a thumb. So yeah. that's just very typical of his humour. And Hoyt has sent across uh, another virtual dram. Again, thank you very much, Hoyt. And he said, here's to Ralph, Ralphie, Roy, and integrity. And tub thumping. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a, a, a big card in, in the hand we've got in this game of poker. It's an ace card. To keep our integrity. To keep, to keep uh, not just that, keep our distance. Yeah. But at the same time, if we phone a distillery, they can be reassured that although we have our opinion it is not abusive it is not undermining in fact the, the bottom line is do they sell product off the back of our presence yes that's that's the bottom line so i guess that that i don't know if it's appropriate then i had i have a small gift for you you've brought along a nice nice dram really? for me a very, very small gift 
Right. But you might not enjoy the language with it. But I need I need you to understand what this is. Okay. Right. Because I'm funded by the community. Yes. Um, after a certain amount of time, uh huh, I gift the community right back something to say Do thank you. you. Okay, okay. With something that they can't that can't be bought. Right. Okay. So that they can they only they have it. Okay. Uh huh. And it's and it's a coin. It's a is challenge it? coin. It's a whiskey coin. Is it? Yes. Right. Have but you heard about these coins? I haven't. But you you I'll only accept it in one condition. Right. I'm not telling you what it is until you. Okay, okay. I'll I'll tell you. Well, this is that. This is now. I held a poll with my pa my patrons, and I said, "These evangelist coins that I have that cannot be bought that go to people mm -hmm. for helping me share whiskey. That's right. what they do. Okay, okay. As a thank you, they they're just to, for me to say thank you. Uh -huh. Um, and they have a we, we kind of design on the back that's got a we kind of hidden Easter egg secret message in it and things. Uh -huh. and, I want to give one to somebody that you deem uh -huh. has been a positive evangelist and has helped you in whiskey. Right. There's you no... were the one who okay. was nominated by my patrons on that post. Okay, okay, right. Lots of worthy people were put forward, mm -hmm. lots of really cool nominations and names, but mm -hmm. you were the one that, that floated to the top. And it, I can't... I can't pass the opportunity right, now come on, let's see it. to say let's this. See it. What is there's it? a wee personalised note in here with is Rafi that? Mitchell there, right? Okay. Uh -oh. There's a wee thing that you can read at your leisure. That's nothing. Uh -huh. It's about what how is this conceived. It's meant to evoke the idea of smoke. It's not made of gold. It's not made of gold, unfortunately. <laughs> now it is. It's stuck in here, but it's only a wee bit of gum. You can peel it out. Let's peel it out. Right, sure. And I'll even so you can hold it in your hand. Oh, I'll peel the gum off. Right. Lovely. And this is to say, I see you've only got a hundred left over there. No, these are not. These, <laughs> these, these are not. These over here. What are they? They for your other channels. These, these are for sale. People can buy a, these. They can buy those. These are these are uh, right. these are Aquavita coins. Okay. Right, so. Um, but these are not. These are given and gifted oh only. Oh goodness, I tell you. Okay. Let's have a look so at this. So they are to the OG evangelist, to the Did OG you see whiskey that? tuber. Look at that. Oh, not that lovely. Well, thank you very much. Yes. That's splendid. And it always comes, if, if I'm handing it over hand mm. and when we're together, it comes with a handshake. Does it? Well, there you go. You. Okay, okay. I'll tell you, you what, well, I'll tell you, keep the rest of the bottle. Well, there's no need for you to, uh, to do uh, that. Uh, but. Uh, 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 sorry, I've got a few left. I do love Florin Fauna and I don't have a rose bank. Right, That's so very, very wonderful. Get, Thank you wonderful. Very, Do very I get much. the box Thank with you. it as well? This is your box and this That's is your lovely. little. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to set this up in the bothy. I couldn't give and Ralphie then, whiskey. I can't give Ralphie whiskey. I mean, it's, no. like, it's like taking <laughs> rice to China, right? It's like this. Yeah, coast to Newcastle. Yes. I'll tell you what, I'll pop this up on the bothy, up in the shelf, and then you can watch it over the next few months get covered in black mold. There you go. I can't hey, think of it. I can't think of anything better. <laughs> okay, let's uh let's catch up a wee bit. That's splendid. Thank you very much. No, you're very, very welcome. Let's have one more question. Another okay, because I've got loads of these and I know that we're not going to get near them. <sighs> okay. Christine Deems yes. asks, if there, Hello, was, Christine. if there was one, she's a fantastic supporter, Christine, mm -hmm. if there was one discontinued whiskey or even distillery, he would choose, you would choose to have brought back into production, what would it be? <sighs> oh, now that's not actually too easy because there is quite a number of rest in peace distilleries out there that are beyond mothballed. They've disappeared. And I know that some of you are thinking, oh, Ralphie, say Port Ellen or say Brora, but it's neither of those. What I'm going to say is Linlithgow because I had the, the finest whiskey I've ever tasted. And I'm a big fan of the Lowland style because I really get that subtlety, that understated, suggested notes that you get over time in the development and the tail end of aged Lowland whiskies. And I've been really lucky that I've got hold of when I when I moved into Glasgow, um, I, I knew some of the old um, Coopers that had retired down the local pub. And of course, they were drinking all their money because they had a drink habit. For the job they did uh so they when they were looking for going on holiday they'd be selling some of the wee bottles and stuff they'd collected over the years uh, and so i got to try some of these discarded blender samples of old glen kinshi old ochentoshin old 
you know, old lowland stuff, some of which didn't even have labels, but it was just can I Can I guess the expression that you were going to mention there? It's the 1979 rare malt St. Magdalene. It right? is, the 19-year-old yeah. St. Magdalene, yeah. which I, I've given the highest malt mark of any whiskey ever. Um, and I'm so glad. I mean, I actually remember buying those bottles. It was in Great Western Road in Glasgow, and it was a licensed grocer, basically a shop, a shop where you would go just to buy bread, <laughs> milk, and confectionery. And it was a bit of a hole-in-the-wall place. And I'm passing by the window. I thought, what? What on earth? And up on the top, top shelf, for whatever reason, um, they had this row of rare malt selection whiskies. And at that point, I was just becoming aware that this was actually kind of mis misconstrued as an independent bottling. But in fact, it was an official bottling yeah. disguised as an as an, an official bottling, so that many of the mainstream whiskey drinkers had were overlooking them. So I got two bottles from the one shop, and then I managed to get another bottle from another shop before they disappeared. Seventy-four pounds fifty a bottle. It's incredible. It's just, and that I remember. I remember Serge's opinion on that whiskey, and mm. now it's endorsed by you. I got to try a dram of it, mm. um, and I paid. I paid thirty odd pounds for one dram, mm -hmm. but just because it was one of those ones that had had been uh, people talked about, be not so much in the in the world of the the whiskey world, mm -hmm. but what was potentially lost in terms of a lowland whiskey that what lowland whiskies used to stand for. Well, absolutely, and Little Mill. I mean, people don't realize there's some fabulous Little Mill out there. You can it's still so, get it. And you can still get it. But anything aged now, Little Mill at auction, there's, you know, they, the times are changing quick and people move fast. Now the prices are ramping up. But tell me, you paid £30 for that whiskey. That's a lot of money. Did, was it worth it? Did you enjoy it? I can, If I close my eyes and concentrate on it now, I can still taste it. Yeah. And it gave me an experience. It was super hot. It was at 60-something mm. percent. I don't remember. It's... It's up to close to 60 percent what you were tasting there was something that was concentrated it really that's it right. was whiskey elixir uh -huh, but that's right and i remember and it just take water and water and water and it just can and it just takes to so long because it's so condensed yeah uh, and there's there's relatively few casks actually do that and they're not quite sure why it happens it's down to the provenance equation um in fact something that my next review is going to be highland park 12 year old valor mm -hmm. um which it's going to be interesting because I'm comparing it to um, another early 2000s bottling of Highland Park, which was for a single cask for Oddbins, okay, 12 year old, and I mean that's a absolute stunning one in a hundred sherry casks. Old school and stuff. Old school stuff. But you you still have in every warehouse you have just a few duffers. But you have many competent then you have the carriers the good ones that are going to in the mix in the blend of whether it be a blend or a single malt they're going to lift the whole batch up and then you have these one in a hundred casks which just the singular quality of that cask is and and the way it works with the content is just amazing um, and that's what we had there. It's Certainly, almost like the whiskey is taking care of itself, right? It's like we we don't design it at all; it's mm -hmm. doing it itself. Scott from Scottish Distillers is saying, "Ralphie is an evangelist, and the reason we started reviewing, he's also the reason people believe in not caramel." Food Quick is also saying, "I tried to super chat, but didn't know the postcode for School Street, Bomore and Isla." Mm -hmm. Food Quick is as well from Canada, but he's over here. I've got to hang out with him last week. He's in Isla just now. Quig, Andy, I hope you're having a fantastic time. Also, two super chats coming in from. Please stop doing this. Uh, here we go. Craig Ritchie has sent across a, a virtual dram saying, superb evening, gents. A wee thank you for all the great drams you have pointed me towards. Craig, thank you so much. Hello, Craig. And the Malton Man, Man Cave. cave. Keith, Keith again. I've, I've got one of them. <laughs> you have got a Man Cave, yeah. <laughs> I know I already sent a super chat, but I am now pouring a Springbank. Oh, good choice. And I just wanted to say that thank you so much to Ralphie for introducing Springbank to me. Mm -hmm. The liquid is truly magical. Thanks, yes. Keith. Um, a word to the wise, if you're a Springbank fan, buy a few bottles, even of the 10-year-old, and put them aside. I suspect Springbank is going to be discovered shortly. I think it's already happening, I think. You uh, know how difficult it is for us to buy Springbank in Scotland now? It's frustrating. It is. Ralphie, David Patterson is saying, Hello, I David. also appreciate your rum reviews. There's a lot of talk Thank about you. rum tonight, quite a surprise. I appreciate that because, you know, the... 
as any more alternatives and and serge has the same experience he gets oh, why are you doing with why are you doing with the rums because it's not to the same standard blah 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 but w in order to have access to 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 quality we need to widen our net to catch the fish so to speak whether it be rum bourbon because there's some four roses for example small batch is, is a really good example of a great great spirit or whether it be mezcal for example although some mezcals are outrageously priced and i wouldn't waste my money uh, but we need to spread our net and also when we start to explore other spirits we're not just getting additional flavors we might not necessarily discover in whiskey but we're also getting the forms of these liquors the way they work the way we react to them personally when we encounter them and i know that you'll probably you will agree that you know we can have a few glasses of whiskey and we'll be in a nice mellow mood we can have a, a you know a few glasses of rum and and we can be ready for a party you know do different you, do you liquors. Feel a difference yeah i do feel a difference yeah, absolutely um and i find that when i'm drinking rum i simply drink less of it and it happens to be drunk slower compared to whiskey, which um, I can. Sounds like I need to drink a wee bit more. <laughs> David, David right. Patterson. So, sorry, David. Thank you. Thanks for your nice words. And he's also saying thank you to me as well, David. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And another one just popped in behind David there as well. Looks mm -hmm. like from Amy. If I recognise that A, that's up at the top. It is from Amy. Amy. You star, Amy. Hello, Amy. Press that like and show Ralphie and Roy appreciation. Amy does oh, a wonderful job of bullying everyone into leaving shit. a wee like because we all forget to hit the like, don't we? We do, yes. We drift in and out and we forget. What, what is it the gamers say? Smash the likey. Smash. smash it. Just smash it. Smash the like button. How are you feeling about time? How, are you feeling Fine. comfortable? Carry on. Are you Carry enjoying on. this? I, if all these folk have taken time up to turn up and leave a comment and we're rattling all through the comment, unfortunately, we just can't get to everybody. You know, take as much time as you want. Even if it over, over goes on and on, it's fine. Yes. Because it's my 10th anniversary. I'm doing something a little bit different that I don't normally do. Um, and, and this has been, and thank you for the invite here, because I would never dream of doing this myself. It's just not my thing. I mean, you've got a computer there. You've got computers there. You've got the microphone. You've got, the, you've got another computer there. We had a wee glitch to the beginning. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm glad it's not my responsibility. Yeah. I'm just sitting here as the guest. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I think it's just it's one of those things that you know I'm I'm mindful. I can sit here and go as long as you like, but I'm mindful of you and just you just keep me right. That's fine. And we'll take obviously the lead from the crowd as well when yes. you think it's when you think it's time to mm -hmm. wind it up. I mean, we're okay here. We're we're mm -hmm. ten minutes to eleven. Of course, the V pub was a wee bit early tonight. I'm usually at quarter to ten, so I started at just nine or just after. Um, then you know we can. It's um, even got my name on it, folks. Look yes. at that! All of those go name and then look at that personalised. Yeah, these are these are hand. Everything is handmade. Well, I didn't make the box, but yeah, the wee sticker goes on and and things. And yeah, I want people to know that I'm grateful. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we are genuinely, genuinely yeah. grateful. You said it well, downstairs earlier. Yeah, you were when you were talking about. You said when you first put your video out, nobody came along, and you were talking to some friends who looked and watched, and then eventually some people started to watch, and some people started mm. to watch. And I want you to share that story if you can. Right, I'll do it now. Story. Let's do it right now. Um, how it all started. Um, I was. I've really. I moved into Glasgow in 1987. And when I moved into Glasgow, someone gave me a bottle of 12-year-old Buna Haben as a housewarming present. Now, I had a wee flat. So for everybody that asked what Ralphie's Epiphany whiskey was and the whiskey that started it for him, because there's a few questions of that, or elk, yeah. Buna Haben 12. Buna Haben 12. Old bottling, Buna Haben 12. And at that point, I was drinking dark rum and tonic, o o ODV, OVD. Yes. yes. Old vatted. Demerara, yes, still buy it, yeah. With tonic in it, it yeah. used to be a lot better than it is now. It's pretty crap now, and I must just say, I'm not too impressed with pussers either. Anyway, moving on. But um, I, I was just, you know, glugging in the tonic, and it was not too sweet, which is what I enjoyed. And uh, basically, I ran out of rum, so I had a bottle of Buna Haben. So I just opened it and uh, put the tonic in that. <laughs> <laughs> that, this was single obviously... malt, and, single malt, and tonic water. It's really, really nice. And then I ran out of tonic water one night, and I just thought, "Damn it, I'm going to have to use the stuff out the tap." So I thought I'm putting less and less and less. Actually, 
this really tastes quite delicious. I'll maybe go out and I went down to the local pub and asked for a few. They had behind the bar the Glen Finnick, of course. That was the next one. Then the Glen Livett, you know, the usual. And then the Macallan. I thought, Macallan, you know, take it or leave it. You know, I wasn't quite ready for that. But this is in the late 1980s. And then I just, once I started having money that I was earning that I wasn't spending, because I'm so suspicious of banks, I just started buying bottles of whiskey and I ended up with over 2,000 bottles of whiskey yes. because I've, I was just a compulsive collector. I mean, I'd go, I used to go up to Loch Fine Whiskies in Verere. I was a total hoarder. And I had the Undertaker stash because when I was became an undertaker, uh, when I stopped managing a restaurant, I became an undertaker and um, I was basically earning a lot more money because it's a job people don't want to do, but it suited me and I'd rather do that when working in a distillery. I know, they weren't expecting to hear that, but it's true. I'm quite glad. I'm very happy to have had the career I have had. And um, at this point, I'm looking at these bottles and I think, you know, maybe I should open and taste a few more of these. And at this point, I'm talking to folk, getting advice around in, in a few of the bars and a few of the um, the shops that sell the stuff. Some shops you'd walk into, like Robert Graham, and they'd have their nose up in the air and a bit of an attitude and... Uh, and I thought, well, you know, look at their prices. I'm not going back there. And other places like Oddbins had go in, and it's a younger younger guys behind the table who are mainly wine, but they're chatty. You know, they've got a bit of time because you go in at a quiet time of day when they're not so busy, and you've got more time for a chat. And, of course, they're pouring you a wee dram because Oddbins were doing that at that point. So I started by all I hear a 30-year-old brewer, first edition, you know, £80, pounds, £85 pounds a bottle. <sighs> Can I afford it? Well, well, let's, let's just try In some. In the context of the time, £85 pounds for a single malt would have seemed extremely expensive. Though, it right? was. Yeah. 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 It, it was if you had an ordinary income. But as soon as um, I tasted it, a whiskey tasting, which had been put on, had been open for a whiskey tasting at Oddbins, I thought, bloody hell, you know, I should. I, even at these early stages, I realised I should get two or three bottles and my reasoning was, if I don't open and drink them, I can give them as presents. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I can give them as presents or swap them for something. Closed distillery, folks. Flora and Fauna, one of my one of my whiskey fetishes, as you all know. Yeah. And uh, my first uh, Flora and Fauna at Rosebank. Wonderful. Doug Crisop is sent across a, uh, a Hello, virtual dram. He's saying, I collect that way. It's amazing what Ralphie does and what Aquaviti does and what is going on now. Thanks, Doug. Thank you so much for your dram. William Davilar, would you say? Dave, Davilar. Davilar, Davilar. Davilar. Happy 10th anniversary, Hello, Ralphie. William. You, thank you both for all your great reviews. Yeah. And Simon Ray as well. Simon. Simon, good to see you. Really enjoying tonight. It's slightly surreal to have you in the same place at the same time. But yeah. something I'd Double love trouble. to see you do again. Do you know what? It's that bizarre feeling because I've been watching you for video for so long. Mm -hmm. It feels familiar to me. Is it? it doesn't feel like I'm sitting with a stranger. Is, is, it, is it what you expected? Uh, uh, no, it's better than I is expected. It? Good. Uh, you're very. You seem very comfortable to me. You seem very. Uh, we, because I knew that live wasn't your thing, uh -huh. and I knew that uh, is this your first collaboration? It is, isn't it? I think. Well, I mean, uh, collaboration with another YouTube channel. I mean, or, yes. Yeah. So yes. I knew that it would be a new thing. I mean, and I've been at distilleries and I've been at auction houses and I've been on location. Yes. Angus, and, uh, yeah. Daft Mill. And, Daft Mill, yeah. Uh, yeah. But to actually, as an onliner, it's just not something that I, I would do uh, because I, I just I like just to stick in my little corner, like little Jack Horner, with my thumb in the plum, in the yes. plum pie and all that. So, yes. you know. But yeah. a, a reason that it's my 10th anniversary I should do something a little bit different, so here I am. And you know, if you ever feel that you want to mark something, you want to Hang connect about, with the Tomato mates. Yoshi says, I've collaborated with Big Clive. That's true. Well, that is. He's not a whiskey Clive. channel, Big Clive. He's not Clive. a whiskey channel. He is a, a... A brother. He's my brother, yeah. You wouldn't guess we're related, but, you know, it oh, seems to work. He's funny, though. And the two of the yeah. dynamics... When the two of you get together, it's really funny. We've been practicing all our life. And I, can I say, I had a, I had a wee laugh at, at, at your uh, at your tenth anniversary. Yeah, you, uh -huh. you even had a, a you had a wee whiskey fart that you left in there. Mm. And the two of you just shooting the and trying to work out which way the numbers go. It was zero one, and then it was ten, and things like that. And you being you, you just leave all of that in there and let us enjoy it. It's, it's great fun to see. Bigclive.com as well. He's got his own channel. His best ever viewed video is YouTube Gold. 
it's just wonderful. It's one with a wee plastic doll that I don't Fanny want to spoil Flambo. it. For yeah, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. It's called Flanny Flambo. Bigclive.com. If you do go in and if you do end up subscribing to Clive, tell Clive because it'll tickle him that you're there because of Ralphie, that Ralphie sent you. And look, what just watch that video. It's just absolutely wonderful to watch. And tell Clive, tell Big Clive to buy me plain chocolate and sweeties. Yes. <laughs> Next question. Yes, a question. Okay, here we go. This is a good one, actually, from Craig Ritchie. Is that interesting? Yeah, here's one? another one. Mendip Fox says, Serge Valentin. I had an interview with Serge Valentin on location in Speyside a number of years ago. You did, and I remember you sitting on a wee wall outside That's there. That's right. And um, you, you and Serge are buddies, though, right? You just you know. Absolutely. well. I mean, we we do, we do separate things, but we sympathise yes. with the occasional flack that we we kind of can yeah. draw from yeah, the whiskey yeah. industry. Yeah. Uh, and but but Serge is he really has is, established a consistency in particularly for obscure um, dis distillery bottlings. It's become an archive, actually. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I think we have to remember back in a time before Ralphie, mm -hmm. before I was watching you and I was trying to learn about whiskey, mm -hmm. the only resource I had was was uh, Whiskey Fun, mm -hmm. you know, the Malt Maniacs thing and Serge's reviews, that they were out there, albeit in an early form, yeah. but they were there and, and, and they were kind of before video because we didn't have the bandwidth to mm -hmm. deliver or receive in video back then. They had these websites and they were sharing the reviews through that as well. Yeah. Wonderful. In fact, when I first loaded my videos, it was dial-up. Uh, no doubt, yeah, 2009. It was. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. You've got a comfort break in. Dustin Silvestri. Hello, Dustin. Rafi, if you were a hot dog, would you eat yourself? No, not if I was hot dog, but if I was made of chocolate, I'd have a damn good lick. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Rafi yeah. was clever, and he had a comfort break before this live started. Yes. But I was stressed, and I because right. I was trying to fix Off the body you go, thing, right. I I'll go. look after things. Here's the question. Here's the yes, question. From right Craig so. Ritchie, thanks for your question, Craig. He said, right great so. V-pub as usual, Roy. A question for Ralphie. Does he think that by shining a light on the less well-known distilleries, the online whiskey community has contributed towards the rise in prices? Right, Joe. Um, okay, okay. Now, which button shouldn't I press? <laughs> I'm not going to press any buttons. No buttons. Right. As regards shining a light on less well-known distilleries, for example, Glen Cadam is, is one worth mentioning. And, of course, Paul Blair. Um the idea that I had was here are, here are new bottles appearing at reasonable prices that don't have too much froth and flannel and are not being heavily promoted um, because that's just the way the industry works. And here's my opportunity because I, I of my contacts and the feedback, I can, I can phone people, I can phone a, a specialist liquor store and say, guys, what do you think of this? And what's coming out and what what do you think of that and all the rest of it and i get fairly consistent feedback which helps direct what i'm i'm looking to buy and i don't want to stick to re-reviewing too many obvious well-known single malts like our beg lagavulin and lafroig because unfortunately there's some of these versions that i wouldn't recommend and i wouldn't buy myself so i'm not going to review them and if it's going to be less than 80 points out of 100, well, that's my cutoff points. So that's my little safety net because I don't want to just get overtly abusive um, or too critical and, and get spend too much with negativity. However, I am aware that one of the side effects of bringing people's attention to less well-known distilleries and some of the wonderful bottlings that they have, particularly if you have experience, uh, with single malts, is that they are going to notice the increase in their sales. And I can assure you that the whiskey industry collectively monitor everything that we are doing, both contributors and viewers. Reading through the comments, they absorb all that. In fact, they have departments, and occasionally they bring in consultants to, to uh, deliver software to help them do that. They get increasingly detailed analytics of what's happening, where, who, why, when, and however. Um, does Do they then raise their prices? Yes, some of them do, absolutely. Um, and unfortunately, that's a side effect. The, the answer would be if I discover a, a distillery 
that's a quiet and little bit unknown is I just don't mention it. But where's the fun in that? I'll maybe buy an extra bottle if I anticipate that it's so good it's going to sell out. But things move on. There'll be another distillery along soon. They can they can put the price up, right? But that's the risk they take. The risk they take is they maybe get a sharp gain in sales, which boosts their their, their income for that particular brand, and it makes the marketing figures look good. But then again, they could kind of fall away again afterwards. And I, I mean, a good example of this is Cotswolds Distillery in England, who, when they first introduced the first bottling, it was 46% natural color and chill filtered, but no big fanfares, no big tump thumping. They just put the whiskey out there and let the whiskey fans discover it. And thereafter, they've brought out more bottlings of very good quality, and they're not saying too much about it because they're aware and they're self-confident about their long-hand game of actually developing a reputation in the good times so that they're still around and still keeping people's interest in buying them because of the quality in the not-so-good times, which inevitably are going to return because everything's cyclical. But I think, You're back. But I think, yeah, I think we all have a role to play in kind of helping guide things, mm -hmm. and we just need to be mindful of that as well. Uh, Karayanev has seen Ralph speaking about Blair, but we did cover that a wee bit earlier in the stream, uh, mm -hmm. Karayanev. So, of course, it's always available on the replay. You can go back and yeah. Ralphie has shared they, his... They, they decided to stop releasing vintages simply so, could the, so there could be a definitive decision from a marketing team which I don't believe is an intrinsic part of the distillery itself. I would still send love letters to the distillery, to the people at the Belblair who do such a good job, but certainly none to the marketing team who are probably in a dry old office many, many miles away from whiskey, and they probably gin, drink gin and tonics. Yep, and anybody that's ever been to Belblair will understand how utterly still to this day, even though they're owned by Inverhouse, um, they, they are a very much family-run thing there. The same family that's run it for generations are still very much in place. They're perhaps not in charge, but they're the ones that are actually the feet on the ground running it there. And it's a wonderfully warm welcome and a fantastic place to go and visit, regardless of the decisions that's been made at the brand. I'll mm -hmm. share a wee anecdote with you that I've right, heard so more than once recently. Could okay, turn my the Scotch whiskey change. industry and the Scotch whiskey landscape, and probably lots of whiskey industries everywhere, uh -huh. are bizarrely symbiotic, helpful, and supportive. So you've got Ardbeg and Laphroaig and Lagavulin and all working together in a bit of gear goes down and it fails and it puts them out of production for a while, a neighbouring distillery will come along and, and give them it. They're very kind of cooperative. But when it gets to the point of putting the brand and the label on the bottle, when it's past the production, when it's past the point of making the whiskey, and it gets to the point of putting it on a shelf and competing for space, that's when the teeth comes out. That's when things break and, and fragment and the competition, the boxing gloves go on. But everything behind that up until the point it reaches the bottle is very, very friendly. And, and really that's just a custom and practice within the distilleries themselves, not in the head office so much. It's the, the mutual respect, which you really see how strong an asset that is when you get feedback from distilleries out with Scotland in some regions of the world and maybe not necessarily producing whiskey, where they are arch rivals to one another and do nothing to assist each other, despite the fact that one brand can help help with in tandem with another brand get out there. Collaboration is always Co better than competition. Co Right. Collaboration involves competition, but it's it's knowing the civility of that competition, which along with the, and most importantly, the ground rules that are legal, have legal status and that are, over, are governed by the Scotch Whiskey Association. And although I don't agree with all the decisions, far from it, um, I, 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 I see the value and the need for such an association because there's so many fakes out there that are yeah, being, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so many inferior brands which are mimicked up 
to look like what they are not. And it's it, it's all very well for you and I. We 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 can overview a, a brand that's, name and that's see what it is. Job is as part of this community mm. is to help expose where these weak links are. Jason Whiskey Wise says Inverhouse is going through a train wreck. First old Paltney now Bal Blair. Soon it'll be an Oc. Interestingly, Jason, uh, Rob from Whiskey Six was talking earlier on in this very stream in the chat. He was talking about Anok 18 being, being such great value for money, and it really is right now. But Inverhouse seem to be going through this thing of rebranding and premiumization, and Anok may indeed be, as you quite rightly predict, it could be next. I'm going to surprise you with something. Uh oh. And I'm just going to float it here. Here we go. Do you know about the V pub quiz at the end? Um. You, uh, yeah. Funnily enough, I've kind of I heard about right. it. So what I did is I didn't know if the quiz would be of any interest tonight at all. Mm -hmm. But what I had an idea that make it a Ralphie themed quiz. So every other Ooh. question would we be top up. Would be. <laughs> or do you want to sure. try the other one? Is there another one? There's another one. Well, I'd love to try. I mean, that I'm one. leaving you this bottle, Roy, but you're not like you're not getting the other bottle. I need that for research. I typed a wee comment into the into the chat earlier on, into the lounge, as I call it, and uh -huh. asked, are you interested in a quiz? And it's a fun quiz tonight because half the questions, every other question is specifically relating to this guy and what he's done in the last 10 years. Right. So, And then there's a couple of questions in there. But I had an idea that it's everybody keeps their own score. It's an honesty uh -huh. thing. It's right. like, it's okay. like, you know, you're only playing against yourself. Uh huh. So, Ralphie is the benchmark. Whatever you score, right. they have to try and beat. You have to score low. You have to go low. Right. Right? So, that, so it's them against you. You're scoring against your own things. Right. And how we do it uh -huh. is you take this wee marker. Right. And you take this wee post-it pad, and there'll be an ABC. This is, this, is, this is getting complex. Right, no, you, you just you see the questions, and you go A, B, right. or C, and you hold it there. Right. And then you flip it around. Uh-huh. Near the time, you tear right. it throw it away. Right. Okay. You up for that? Yes. If the, if the, if the lounge... If the people here are up for the quiz, yeah, we could do it, okay. But you need to highlight me, Aquavita, and say yes, or you need to say no, not tonight. Let's just hear Ralphie, maybe something, uh -huh. whatever they want to do. Sideways, and I'll, this I'll is for a wee bit of theatre, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't do this in the mic. Spot. Are you comfortable? You're too I'm warm. Really comfortable, not at all. Well, I'm quite warm. I'm warmer that than I am when the mic's spotty. But of course, you're heating the place. Yes. Um, I mean, as, as much as I do heat the mic spotty, it's just the walls are damp. We I see, mean, it's, we see it's a breath. warehouse. It's a warehouse. See, we can see your breath in there. Anyway, Oftentimes, you, well, you'll see your breath after this. This is just just out. I, I'm I'm not going to review this malt mix, but I am going to recommend it to you. This is Kilkerran heavily peated. It's three year old single malt whiskey. It's only just out there. So if I mention it right now, literally is launched this week, I think. So if I mention it to you as a Ralphie recommended, you have got a heads up to go out and. Get yourself a bottle of cask strength Kilkerran, less if you're in the UK, less than forty pounds a bottle. Yep, I had a pleasure of trying this recently at the Fife Festival. Actually, Fishy I've glass, got clean glasses here. Right, so I'm not having one. But I'll give you one when I get home. When I get home, I have a wee beer and I'll watch a watch this wee documentary. <laughs> I watch this, yeah. <laughs> Pick okay. out all my little glitches. Now, this is a cast so, strength, as you said, right? 59.3%, heavily peated. I wish they'd put an age statement on it. Then I could have reviewed it. But the reason I don't review non-age statement whiskies is there are a few good ones, but there's too many ones that I wouldn't buy and wouldn't recommend, so I just make it simple for myself. It needs water. I'll hold the bottle up again. I didn't give you... This is batch number one. Lots and lots of malt, lots of tasty malt, literally like you've been chewing on peated malt if you've ever done that at a distillery. But lots of sugar, lots of sweet sugars, icing sugar. And the smoke, the smoke is there as well. Non-chill filtered, no added colouring. Music to our ears. But it's Springbank. I mean, we we expect it nothing. It's Springbank. Less. But you see, they've now got well, obviously Glengale, but it's, it's Spring. But this Glengale, yeah. absolutely. It's one of these whiskies which, despite its youthfulness, I think it actually needs to sit in the glass for ten minutes. But it's got a lovely, nutty, slightly resinous peatiness to it. It's certainly nothing yeah. like Isla. It doesn't have that. No, absolutely not. That harsher phenolic note that comes through in some of the non-age statement like Lafroig's. 
the iodine mm -hmm. and the I know what you're talking about the harshness there. Dustin again, thank you so much, Dustin. Hello, Ralph, Dustin. if brand could tell us the age of all whiskey in the bottle, do you think that would reduce the NAS confusion like Compass Box does if you email them? I think it's just ridiculous that they're not allowed to. to be I, I, I really think that, that, that there's a, a great... Whatever's traditional in the Scotch whiskey industry is whatever they decide is traditional. And it will remain traditional until it's no longer traditional. I think that at this moment in time, global sales are vigorous and they're not as much as they'd like them to be, but they're quite vigorous. And uh, so they hold the whipping hand uh, and good luck to them. I think that when sales perhaps go down due to better quality whiskies coming from other countries, which will happen, uh, I think that then we will start to see more in consistent integrity style of bottlings and more use of age statements and importantly disclosure disclosure goes hand in hand with integrity which leads to the sustaining of reputation i think if you're making something of quality i think you just need to share that and you need to educate people what you're making and why it's in there and why it's made up the way it is. And I think if you're withholding information, there's probably a reason to withhold it. I think that's the deal. And mm -hmm. I think that we're becoming much more informed. And if we choose to keep and continue withholding information, other markets around the world making good quality products will not. They will share with the knowledgeable audience that's out there buying the product. Mm -hmm. and any of the industries that's currently in place, whether it's Irish or Scotch or whatever, could theoretically fall behind, I yeah. feel. In fact, ironically, uh, one reason that I'm interested in better quality grappas from Italy is that some of the producers like Carlo Gabetti, just outside of Verona, uh, has such fantastic provenance statements, even down to the singular vineyard from which these sources, the the must, uh, the mush uh, and the pulp, for uh from first fermenting and then distilling his, his grappa and it's such a wonderful change from from single malt and it's really good to shake up our palate now and again we need to look at i've got a really nice grappa downstairs i need to mm -hmm. look at it and you can you can have a look and see yeah if it's one i should open listen um jason is telling me that it's overwhelmingly people want to do the quiz but there's a few people i noticed that are keen to have a bit more Ralphie, so we can do both a wee bit. A bit we can chat half and half. Uh -huh. We can chat a bit more as well because I'll look at the amount of people that put these questions together as well, and they were all hoping that they might get their question through to you as well. Right. Let's 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 see. Through. I've got one for you, right. Ralphie. This is from Roy Aquavite. Uh huh. Okay. The scooter incident in St Andrews. Uh huh. Was it a trip over the scooter, or were you actively riding the scooter at the time? So the reason he has a YouTube channel at all is because he has a scooter accident, puts his shoulder out, can't carry coffins anymore. His brother encourages him to sit in front of a camera and talk about whiskey. But was it a trip? Oops, there's a trip, there's a scooter in the way. And a scooter for the Americans out there is the little two-handled thing with wheels uh -huh. that the kids ride on with one leg. Yeah. Um, or were you actively engaged in using the scooter? Right. It was a little kiddie scooter and... My pal's young son wanted me to have a shot and I misjudged how steep the slope was. <laughs> so I was on the scooter when I tripped over it. So I'm going to come clean in that. You've been set up with that question. No. I was trying to keep that under wraps. No. I had to go I tell to you the why. hospital and I was sitting for hours in the outpatients with my <laughs> clavicle dislocated. <laughs> You were on the scooter. I felt it. I knew you were. Do you know what made me ask the question? What? Because it's Clive. Clive, yeah. On the, Clive. On the ten year old and the ten year video that you put out. Yeah. He was making fun. He, he was having a go of you. Yeah. And you just kind of body swear of the whole topic. I did. And you just stepped and it's around. Been rumbled. It. And I had a feeling. I could feel it. I said, I think he mm. was on the bloody scooter. I was. <laughs> That's fantastic. You I were, still tripped over it. But that was when you were back in your late twenties, right? That was ten years ago. So. Sort so, of. so that's too much. That's too fun. I couldn't have imagined that you would. Right. Thank you for disclosing on this channel. Thank the you. The truth for is out. Next question. Wonderful. Let's have another one. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I highlighted the ones that I thought were particularly interesting as well. Okay, Stephen Reynolds from Ireland. Right. Stephen. Oh, Stephen. Stephen asks question for Ralphie. Looking back over a decade of work. 
kind of thing to think about. Uh -huh. What would you do differently or wish you hadn't done at one time or another on the channel? What would you change? Stephen Reynolds. Do you know nothing? Uh, because as much as I could pick out something to change, um, it, you know, I change it for what? It's, it's what it is. I know what I see. What you see is probably slightly different from what I see. Um, I, I simply, right from the word go, although initially in the early, early days I was using my prepared tasting and nosing notes and reading off them, laterally, with enough experience, I just sit and wing it. And so long as we've got an, a malt mention. Now, the malt mention occurred simply because when I first sat in front of the little uh, flip cam at the other end of the table, and I'd gone round because it didn't have a remote That's and right. pressed That's the red right. button to put it on. And I got out, sit at the table, and went, hey, right, hello. Um, uh, 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 and I thought, you know, it's like the first dab of paint on the artist's canvas. Where do you put it? Where do you start your picture? So where do you start your review? And the problem is that when you're busy thinking where to start, you don't start. So the mock mention came in. When I just thought I need, you know, I just something, just say something, just say something to give you time to think about how you're going to start. So that's when the malt mention appeared, and it's never gone. Um, it, it's stuck. Yep. It's quite by default. The whole thing, the whole channel has really n not changed much, except for whether I'm on location or just having a different bottle on the table which I can actually feel that I can say something genuinely singular about it uh, and just share that comment uh, and 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 leave it at that if there was too much structure to it they they, they would genuinely get too long winded um so the best policy what's really worked for me is just to wing it I just want to point out what Eric has shared with you. What's Eric and shared? now Ralphie rides motorcycles at high speeds on the Utah salt flats. But he's, found a, he's found a scooter emoji. Yes. So there's there is a question in here, and I, I did I didn't come off the motorbike actually, which was just as well because it was doing about eighty miles an hour at the time. Yes, because I am in the presence of a Guinness World no, Record you're not. holder. If you want no. to be in the Guinness. Oh, World so Record, but you've got to pay a thousand pounds and okay, fill in their okay, application okay. form. That's how they make the money. But you have an official record. I have an official r record at the Bonneville Salt Flats Speed Week event for all vehicles, so long as they've not got jet engines. And this has been a long-running event provided by the Southern Californian Timing Association, who are a very well-respected part of the racing landscape in the United States. It is very, it's got a great history behind it. I mean, world land speed records, outright world land speed records, including the current existing one and the Thrust 2, were set on the Bonneville Salt Flats. That's right, yeah. Uh, I, pure, purely through circumstances, I suddenly got the opportunity. I thought, well, I probably won't get anything, but at least to get, as a biker, to get a run on Bonneville, it's a dream come true. Um, and even the week before we went, the bike was just, it wasn't working at all. But I got really, really lucky. I got a series of good fortune. And one of the best things was the bike hand-built by experienced people. I mean, I've never raced in my life. And you really had to, on that surface, it's like um, slightly gritty sheet ice meets corrugated tin roofs. That's what it's like. It's not an easy surface. It's not smooth at all, is it? Not, not yeah. at all. But the bike was so beautifully set up. And in fact, it was my inexperience because I wasn't wanging the throttle that probably helped to cushion the effects and the power distribution through the engine and actually keep the engine together for the duration of the circuit. So um, well, that's per that leads perfectly into a question from Moz Chun. Moz, hello, Moz. Uh -huh, hello, Moz. One of my one of my more mates. Yeah. Yes. My question for Rafi is, will you make another run at the World Speed Record at Bonneville Salt Flats on your motorcycle or any other motorcycle? No, I won't. And not on another motorbike, but I will go out to help um, one of my team members um, who's got about five records now. I will go out just to be a little bit of a helper, push the bike and actually just see the fabulous and fantastic machines that turn up on the salt. And if you're in the US, if you have the opportunity, 
you can go down as a spectator, but you don't see half as much as if you're part of a team. If you have the opportunity just to be a little helper to push bikes or to push cars or jump at it, because the caliber of machines there, if you're a tech head, is just phenomenal. I enjoyed your videos very much from that Thank whole you. thing. Uh, and uh, what was the bottling? Meteor? It was a Port Charlotte, wasn't it? It was a Port Charlotte, and I did a non-commercial celebratory bottle really for backers, supporters, and um, sponsors. And the two sponsors were Scotch Whiskey Auctions and the Bon Accord Pub in Charing Cross. Yep. Uh, so I bought 74.7 bottles uh, called Bonneville, and there's a picture of me and my team in the front label. Uh, Brooke Laddie did that, they bottled it, and I put three bottles, a thank you to the general wider community, I put three bottles of it on the Brooke Laddie table at Glasgow's Whiskey Festival in 2016. Right, was that at Hamden? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, and they just disappeared, and of course when people were talking about it, and because I didn't want too much of an angel's share uh, of what was left in the cask, at Brooke Laddie, I decided a few months later to bottle the rest of the the cask, which just happened to be a lucky cask, um, and uh, and sell them. Um, and as the, meteor, and as meteorite, 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 right, yeah, meteorite yeah. because I have an old meteorite, and I decided if it's going to be an Alfie.com bottling, and whether it's been one or tw five or twenty, or whatever, I want to have a theme going on, and I like space. I like space. I like UFOs and all that rest of it. I like little. I like rockets and and constellations and dust clouds and all the rest of it. So that's how I would be theming my my any more bottlings that I do. And there will be. I'm planning another bottling at the end of this year, possibly Royal Brackla. Um, but I, I've bought a few casks, and the idea is that just as and when they're ready because it's a vanity thing, then I would release them for sale. And it gives me something additional insight from which I can learn and be more informed with with the Scotch whiskey industry. And there's no way I was going to drink I all the whiskey. I think it's a very natural pro progression. I think everybody mm. here watching you would be excited to hear mm. you doing that and be a wee bit frustrated, perhaps, mm. that you haven't done it before now. Well, what's the rush? Um, it's a hobby. I don't want to turn it into a chore. I certainly don't want to end, bottle anything before it's ready. There has been the option, but um, in fact, what, what a, in, instead of that, what I've done as part of my anniversary celebrations is Glenallachie got back to me. They said, Ralphie, so thank you so much for making your 12, our 12 year old your bottling thing a year. You know, is there any other way we can keep? And I said, tell you what, it's my 10th anniversary. If you want to do a malt mates bonnet bottle um, and make sure it's a good cask, get Billy into the warehouse and tell him it's got to be a really nice cask and not too expensive, single cask. I'm happy to endorse it with my bonnet and my, my name on it. And rather than get commission, what would be really nice is just to put part of the profits from that bottling somewhere into the local community where you can see it doing something good and working. So I'm doing it with Glen Allachie. I'm also doing it with North Star because I think North Star does some really good value bottlings. I like what they're doing, and I've had some contact with Ian, the proprietor of North Star. And also, uh, I've got a wee connection with Springbank, which is still to be finalised, and I don't want to give too much away there, but that's going to be something quite special. Watch this space. Yeah. Fantastic. Not and I have anymore. to say, as, as if there was any doubt about how gracious and how generous Ralphie is, uh, annually he'll do a tasting at a Good Spirits company, and it's mm -hmm. always for charity. Yeah. Um, uh, and for two years now I've gone along to that, and Ralphie brings whiskies from his own collection to share. And uh, two years ago, as a Celtic Moose Scott, uh, Scott Monroe, just mentioned it as well, he was at the same tasting, we were at that together. We uh, enjoyed some of that Port Charlotte meteorite, you brought a bottle of that to share. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, your, do you remember what your dram of your final dram of that day was? Was it the Glen Grant? It was the Glen Grant. 42 year old Glen Grant he brought from his own collection. What a fool am I? What a very, very generous man he is. He, the, everyone left that tasting on cloud nine, very, very happy. Listen to the anecdotes, listen to the stories and the jokes and the puns. 
and getting and just sharing, just having a shared experience of wonderful whiskies that you've brought along. I know the Good Spirits Company occasionally will put in a bottle as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but a fantastic thing to do. Have you got any mind to do more of those, or is it going to remain an annual thing? I'll have to no, I'll have to wait and see because being I mean I'm taking these bottles out of my own collection. Um and my collection's I, getting I, I smaller think, and smaller. Yeah, but I think if, but if, I'm, I'm happy to do it because it's good fun. But we'll just wait and see because um, I'm, I'm busy. I'm busy with other things. I'm writing a book at the moment. I've just finished chapter eight. You're getting all the scoops here, boys, <laughs> boys and girls. This is fantastic. I'm writing so you're, a book. Is, this, is this an autobiography or is this a? It, it's basically it's an original whiskey related book, but. It's not where you open the pages and you get an A to Z with pictures of bottles and you get comments about what a whiskey might be, but definitely was last year. Okay. Um, now, no criticism. That's useful as a point of reference, but unfortunately, book content quickly dates. Mm-hmm. Batches do change. Distillers do change styles. They change casks. So I'm really, what's inspiring me is Whiskey by Anais McDonald. It's a yes. great book. It's a wonderful book because it's very anecdotal. It's very story centered and it's not listing still sizes and where the cuts are and, you know, the range and the age statements and, and how old the distillery is and where they get the water. That's already been written. There's no point in doing it again. What I'm really writing is a sort of autobiography, but infused with some original whiskey useful information and anecdotes i i I started it last october and it was a disaster (laughs) i had to rip up all my manuscript after the first chapter because it wasn't working i started again in november but when i started in january everything fell into place um and in fact since january when i finished chapter one after the first week i've been doing literally a chapter every two weeks so i finished chapter eight now and i should have the book finished by the end of may Fantastic. So I'll be self-publishing initially. It's only a 1,000 copies because I don't know how many folk are going to be genuinely interested. And hopefully, fingers crossed, if I can get it self-published in time, uh, I'll be around to 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 promote it and have it available at Glasgow's Whiskey Festival. A 1,000 is not going to be enough. That's my prediction. Do you think so? Clear prediction. If, if I sell the 1,000, I will reprint another 1,000 and I'll probably then arrange... There's a number of options, but I've got to get experienced advice before I proceed any further. The easiest and most practical option is print a thousand copies, put my money down to get them done. Nice quality paperback with a glossy cover. Just sit it in some a few Glasgow whiskey shops and just see how it goes and then take it from there. It will be the inaugural first edition and it will be... Although self-published in a paperback, it will be the very first, first, first type thingy, you know. I have to say that, um, and I think I'm not going to be alone in saying it, that um, I'll be very much in the queue for that book. Probably not at the front. There's going to be loads of people ahead of me. But I'm really, I'd be really, really interested to read it. Um, And not just because of the fact... It'll be a tenner a copy. Don't expect a freebie, mate. Yes, a tenner a copy is... No, I would be very, very interested in that book. It's costing, it costs self publication to get the quality book. It does cost. Um, and then there's transportation and distribution. And I want to get something back on it because it's months of work. But do you know, it's been real fun writing it because part of me, I, I do have some writing ambitions and I've never been, sh- I could have done it as a short story, but I've never been sure One whether second. I could tackle it. Let's have a show of hands in the in the lounge. How many people would be interested in reading a book by Ralphie? Because it's coming in just now. Right, Joe. Show of hands in the lounge. So just say, just say, book yes, and, and or just, just put a just smiley face. Many. A smiley face. This and... already coming in just now, and they're right. they're, they're about the ten seconds That's behind. Richie us. said, "Yep." Yeah. Richie and yeah. Graham Thurston. Yep. Yeah. Ralphie's war stories. Well, there has been a few battles in the past, but a bit more than the battles, more than the battles. Well, I saw Captain 3D I request a chapter on how to, ride, yeah. how to ride a Wavy scooter. Hand, right, yes. There's an ultimate irony there. Uh-huh. You have a land speed record on that. Look at this. There they want go. the book. 
Uh, that's the show of hands, right? There's, there. a, few, there's a few hundred there, right? So that's, there's that you've you've sold right. a quarter of your supply already just by just by asking, right? I, I yes, I'm, I'm uh, I am. Um, it will be entertaining. The, the The idea is it'll be a chapter per drum, and Fantastic. it will be starting. That's as, a good concept. And it will in the first that's chapter start concept. when I first raided my father's drinks cabinet, <laughs> and I get. And I get pished in Kahlua. You don't don't give it away now. But I can't give away too many spoilers. <laughs> that's, that's just that's just halfway through the first chapter. I won't say any more than Still that. Still coming in book, yes, book, book, book. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. okay. Thanks, folks. I appreciate it. And we need a chapter on how somebody that has a, a land speed record riding a bike uh -huh. across the Bonneville Salt Flats yeah. ended up doing all of this because he fell off a scooter. <laughs> well, uh, I tell you what, we all make plans in life and sometimes <laughs> Hans Something York, happens. Thank you so much for your for your virtual drama. Uh, hello, you. Hans. Um, and sometimes you know things just happens. Never underestimate the power of the three fates, three ladies, and they have a mirror. They have a bowl, a smoking bowl, and they cast the runes of everybody's fate. Is that and true? It's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. History is being as Ralphie would say. Do you know the level of collective consciousness amongst the humanoids has amplified vastly due to the internet? Oh, no doubt. No it's doubt. extraordinary. And I think there's a lot of work to be done to get this internet out to the rest of the world and people that don't have it right now. Yeah. Okay, folks, we are going to try um, a versus Ralphie quiz. Now, the questions are softer than normal VPUB questions. Mm -hmm. They're very Ralphie themed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to encourage Ralphie to Will I be any good at this? Low, but low, low. you have to play <laughs> low. If they, I'm going to drop the, thank you for picking it up. You have to send as many people home tonight having felt like they've beaten Ralphie at a, quiz, Ralphie, right, at a whiskey theme. Okay, okay. So if you feel you're doing really well, you need to start throwing things. Okay? Throwing things right too. So as usual, you just, it's multiple choice. It's easy for everybody. Thomas says, thank you so much. Everybody well, has a Thomas. plan until they get hit. Yes, yeah. exactly right. That's all right. We, ho we have to Mike just... Mike Tyson said that. Yeah. Very interesting autobiography. Oh, autobiography. Well, it was written for him. But very, very interesting story about Mike Tyson because, you know, where he's come from and how he trained and all the rest of it. Fascinating. A uh, 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 big bird fan, sir, a pigeon, a pigeon fan. Is that right? Yeah. Mike Tyson. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thomas, for your virtual dram. So as, as I'm saying, it's the usual format for the VPUB uh, quiz at the end. It's a multiple choice. I'll share the screen with you. You'll see the choices on there. Um, do your best. Keep your own score. And tonight, you're pitching yourself against Ralphie. Yes. So come on, get on with it, Roy. Good luck. <laughs> okay, question one, folks. This is a Ralphie-themed one. How many Whiskey of the Year awards has Ralphie given to malts with less than 43% ABV. Oh, geez, so How many have you given them a whiskey of the year that's less, sorry, than 46? That should say 46. Such an amateur. 46. Well, it says 43, Roy. It does, it does. Oh, for goodness, it's falling to bits now. Less than 43. It's, it's a You're not bad getting start. any more roast bank. You've had enough for tonight. So let, let, me, let me say it another way. Let me right. say, how many whiskey of the year awards has Ralphie given to 43% ABV whiskeys? That counts. Do you know, I don't say. know. Is it A, none, B, one, or C, two? So on your wee piece of paper there, Ralphie, put an A for what, for what, for none, put a, a B for one, and a C for two. And then no when, when all of these, these are coming in, um, <laughs> the answers will start to pour in. None. You can say, you think it's none, okay. Okay. So what we need to do is you need to keep that to yourself. Uh huh. And then they'll all answer. <laughs> so I've given my answer away and I shouldn't have. Yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. okay. That's the first for, for this one, right? And and I'd screwed up the question as well. Right. Um I, I was in a wee bit of a rush to put it. Uh -huh. I'm always in a rush. It's just I can't use that as an excuse anymore. I've just got to it's try out. We've not stalled yet. I think that's folk right. are still that's being right. entertained. They're loving it. They're loving it. Let's carry on. So let's see. Ralphie has given uh his whiskey of the year award to one whiskey at 43%, one less what? than 46%. I thought none. One. Yeah, one. I, I got that wrong. Ben Romack, 10-year-old. Right. You had a you had a whinge at them for being 43. You said it should have been 46, but despite it, you were happy. So there right. you go. Ben Romack, 10-year-old. Question two, 
is a whiskey question. Which of these Dufton distilleries has the smallest capacity? Which of these Dufton distilleries uh -oh. is the weest? This is this is a banana skin. I predict this is a banana skin. There's a clue for you. A, Balvenie, B, Caninvi, or C, Mortlach. Which has the smallest capacity? Now, of course, I'm not talking about the most amount of single malts out there. I'm not talking about the most they even actually produce. But in terms of theoretical capacity, which of those is the smallest? Right. Okay. Let's see what they're coming in. It's going to be hard for Jason to, to run this tonight. But remember, you're keeping your own scores. Just keep your own scores. And at the halfway point, then, when we're sitting at nine tick questions out of ten, we can ask you where you are and look for who's scoring highly. And goes quickly, I'll tell you right now that the smallest of those three Dufton distilleries is bizarrely Mortlach. Is it? Mortlach, yeah. And I've got I the it was Balvenie. Uh, yeah, I've got the capacities there. Balvenie, seven million litres per annum. This is theoretical mm. capacity capacity. Of I course. love Mortlach. Mortlach. And I'll tell you what I've noticed is we both the do. increasing trend about in, in official bottlings to slightly round off and sanitise the grittiness and elemental savoury nature of that dram, mm -hmm. which is far better expressed through bottlings from Adelphi and Signatory from and Gordon yep. McPhail. But the problem is that you also get some absolute horror stories from them as well. There are, there are, there are ugly Mortlacks out there. There are ugly ones, yeah. and And because of the nature of the license bottlings from Gordon and McPhail as well, they're, they're taken from this different casts, so you do get batch variation from time to time. But when you get a good Mortlack, when you get the savoury note, Aye. I I'll often get that thing like I'm smelling a bag of hula hoops, right? Beef hula hoops. Right. Um, I know it's a bizarre taste to know, but, but that beefy, savoury smell. <laughs> um, but it's a wonderful dram, yeah. I think. Okay, question three. <laughs> That's a funny one. What colour jacket did Ralphie sport in 2014? I'm asking you to go back five years. What colour of jacket in 2014? Right, okay. Was it his dark grey blue era? Was it his burnt orange era? Or was it a dark green era? Those of you who are watching Ralphie know that he changes his uniform every year. He's got a different bonnet and jacket combo every year. I always change the jacket. Always change the jacket. The previous jackets always get ceremonially burnt, except for one. Except for one. One jacket survives. Only one jacket survives. Fortunately, it was actually the best quality one, so it doesn't look too scabby. And I've got my answer here. It's in a good, good home. <clears throat> Let's have a look to see. Everybody seems to think it's C. Everybody's saying dark green. Uh -huh. There's some B's, some A's in there as well. Let's have a look. In 2014, <coughs> Ralphie was sporting a dark gray, gray blue affair. What's and I've it? got a wee picture of it there. The bluey, darky bluey one. There you are. There is your 2014 oh, you jacket. See, see, literally the first week, the pockets disintegrated in that. And I was put, trying to put my hands in my pockets to keep stuff, and it was falling through the bottom. Was well, a, a very, a very wise man, man once said, don't buy shite. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're only and wearing we it talking for one about, year and then burning it, yeah. you know, I, well, I the suppose. jackets, and it's just to keep me warm in the body. So you, you, were, you were talking about your caps when you said don't buy shite. Uh, don't buy shite, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's proper tweedy ones. They're nice. So there you go. It was, in fact, uh, A, dark grey, blue. Give yourself a point if you thought it was A. Mm -hmm. Okay, move on quickly to question four. What is unhurried since 1833? These are tough questions. We've got a very knowledgeable crowd. Have you? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you couldn't. just, you I just looked. I wouldn't last a minute in these, see, these guys. See how many get this. See, see uh, how many come in with the right answer, okay? Right. What is unhurried since 1833? <clears throat> we just watch them. They, they, they know their stuff. Yeah. Some of these. I phrases, reckon. I reckon they're opening up the wee, the the, the wee, the guidebooks and all the rest this. of it. Look at this. Oh, oh for goodness' sake. Oh, look at everybody getting it right. Have you given up? <laughs> no, I'm trying to write them down. <laughs> I, I, I don't I, know. I encourage you strongly to follow the crowd. Do you? Right, okay. <laughs> I'm going to follow the crowd so I don't look like a complete turnip. What I mean, scoring, it's yeah. a good thing I don't claim to be an expert. I wouldn't last five minutes. <laughs> there we go. That's me. Put my answer down. Okay. I followed the crowd. I hope the crowd are leading me in the right direction. Okay. 
So unhurried since 1833 was, of course, Glenn Goyne. Going to have an 1881 Balblier. Oh, what was Balblier now? Mm. I wouldn't, you know, there's a, the whiskey they produce there that I know you've got, Roy, but you can only get it at the distillery, but it's well worth having and it's not too expensive and it's their teapot dram. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's a non-age statement. And it's and a non-age statement. On, on this very V-pub, on my uh -huh. first night V-pub, I've had a whinge because mm -hmm. I can't hear what Ralphie thinks about the teapot dram because it's uh -huh. a non-age statement. Yeah, and yet I bought it, and it's one of the few occasions where I bought a whiskey, not for review, but I just happened to be visiting the distillery anyway because it's just got such a lovely little location. Uh, but a lot of the particularly older Glengoins are hellish expensive, but the teapot dram is, is actually pretty good value for money, although I wish they'd just bottle everything at 46%, but that's just me having a Ralphie rant. Yeah, yeah. A lot of this Glengoin stuff at 43 is... Kind of trying to address that market. That, it's kind of hovering in the middle. Yeah, but they do do a very classy spirit. I always think that Glengoyne's a very elegant spirit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show you an image now, <laughs> and then I'm going to ask you what it is. Oh, we're getting a wee yawn from, from the big guy. Let's I'm have fine. A I've had a busy... I'm over in Glasgow, so I'm kind of busy. Don't have much time for sleep. Do we know where this is? That? I think Ralphie knows where that is. Don't say oh, it out. Like, don't say it out. Don't say it out. I'm not going to say. No, I'm not going to say. But what I would say is that... Um, you know, it's, these we are talk, old buildings. We about it. Those are very old buildings. They go back many, they go back centuries. Are we looking at A, Glendronach, B, Glengarry, or C, Daft Mill? Which, I'm going to just leave that up there a wee while. A, Glendronach, B, Glengarry, or C, Daft Mill. Makes a nice screensaver, doesn't it? Yeah. And I, I tell you what, I'm going to just, I'm just going to look. I'll look at it. Everybody's getting it. Every, everybody's getting it right. It's a knowledgeable wee crowd. So if I lowball these quizzes and I put out easy questions... Well, they never, they never find out this information from coming to my channel. <laughs> no well, way. Well, probably because you wouldn't share an image of Daft Mill, but you've just reviewed the Daft Mill summer release, didn't you? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I just I knew that there's so little out there, but I wanted there to be some tangible point of reference for whoever does get a bottle, that, you know, someone has reviewed it in video format um, and I was just fortunate. I just get get in quick, um, and I just kind of keep an ear to the ground. You know, I know it's in the bottling plant. You know, so I reckon, right? Okay, so many it's, days from that, and pff, just go for it. It's auction only now, though, isn't it? For most of us in the UK, and unfortunately, and it's very. It's only sixteen hundred bottles, right? So it's, it's tiny. It's only hundred casks. Yep. Yeah. A year. It's. Uh, he doesn't make a lot. That's true. And we're obviously looking at, based on what Ralphie's just mentioned to you there, at that small, small volume at C Daft Mill. Well done, everybody. Yeah, you all knew yeah, that. You I, I all got knew that one. Exactly what you're looking I at. I got that one. <laughs> um, okay, easy one for one of us. Ralphie's Whiskey of the Year 2013 was oh, A. Geez, that's four years Bal ago. Blair 02. B. Old Pulteney 17. Or C. Glengoyne 18. Oh, I think I know. I've got it. I've got it. Got it. A. Bal Blair. B. Old Pulteney. Or C. Glengoyne. Eighteen. So we have. Um, oh, I think did I skip forward there? Let's see what everybody is saying. Everybody thinks. Oh, they're they're wavering between. See that so they're getting they're sharing the scores here four out of five. Daniel Vermas four out of five. Ebhead four out of five. Richie Z four out of five. Dram session four out of five. Uh huh. Was that the last question? No, no, no. no. I, 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 have you had enough of hearing about yourself? No, your carry on. Oh, it's, uh, it's all news to me. <laughs> Do you know? Uh, to be honest, it becomes a bit of a blur. Well, I know it's difficult to remember. It is question. Six was A, Bal Blair, O2 was your oh, whiskey yeah, of the year that. in 2017. Well, that means it's taken them over a year. If <laughs> I'm sure you're... Turn around to, you know, with, fair enough, the, it's, it's specifically the 25-year-old Bal Blair where they've really jacked the prices up because they've identified this sudden market that they've not anticipated. Um, and fortunately, the 12-year-old now, hopefully, they can hold the quality, but I have my concerns. But 
because it's a distinctive part of the why we appreciate Bill Blair is because it it's not a compromised, sanitized single malt. It is what it is, and experienced whiskey fans will get it, maybe challenged by it, but certainly, you know, we're experienced enough that if we feel that our, our whiskey's a little too dry, we know how we can add something else to it just yeah. to soften it up. We've all got enough knowledge in, in that respect. And I think specifically that O2 at that time was mm -hmm. a particularly uh, fabled Balbuera. It was one of the best ones. I mean, I think it was a 10-year-old when it was bottled, right? right? And it was really, really wonderful stuff. Okay, question seven. Fire through these real quickly. Uh -huh. Which Isla distillery once appeared as a flora and fauna bottling? You'll get this. I'll get this. Was it A, Colila, oh. B, Lagavulin, or C, Bamor? Uh, got it, got it. I can, easy, give, easy. I, I can confirm Ralphie has kicked this one out of the park. No problem, he knows this one. Um, let's see, which of those three, A, Colila, B, Lagavulin, or C, Bamor, had a flora and fauna expression? So that would be one of these here. It was one of those there, yeah. And eventually they uh, gave it its own single mm -hmm. malt place in the market. Question for you, Roy, is on that particular Isle of Malt, what was the image that they used in the label? Because all the images were different for the different malts. Well, that's a good one. Who is isn't it? And you... I'm going to have a wee guess. I'm going to have a wee guess. I'm going to, well, I write it here. Right, write it there, and then we can check it up on the I, I, on, on the whiskey auction sites yeah. afterwards. I've got a bottle of it now. Have you? Yeah. Is it I that? So. I've no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just know there's a image there. I mean, I you know, I don't think I ever bought a bottle of that. <laughs> I thought you knew. Because I was that busy I buying the cask knew. strength. See the cask strength, Kalila, early versions. Oh, stunning. Same with the cask strength, Lafroy. So as Ralph has just said, just it is bomb. indeed a Kalila. Yep. Flora and Kalila. fauna was once um, a Kalila. I think it was, was it 15-year-old when it was a, a, a flora and fauna? And then it was 12-year-old when it got its official release. Okay, yep. so if you answered A for Kalila, give yourself a point as we move into question okay. eight, which is... Ralphie's first video on YouTube reviews. Now, this is a difficult one, actually. Well, it's part of the question that's in here. Right. So what I'm going to talk about specifically is mm -hmm. your what is on YouTube right now. Right. Not the first one that was released, because that's a story in itself that I yeah. think we should cover. Okay, was it reviewing Irish whiskey, or B, Scotch whiskey, or C, Canadian whiskey? So this is the very first review. The very first Ralphie review, which yeah. you can go and watch now, which is actually the second. Mm -hmm. We'll get to the story about that yeah. in a second. Um, was it covering A, Irish whiskey, B, Scotch whiskey, or C, Canadian whiskey? And just look, I, 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 you're right, going to be quite go. surprised how many folk. Um, here's question eight kicking in now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a few folk getting it wrong, but there's <laughs> many of you getting it right. Of course, they've just opened another page, you see. On the, on the on the computers and done a quick <laughs> check, you see. Well, they have to have fast fingers, honestly. They do they have do. to have fast fingers. Um, fingers. And if That's and if they're, if they're doing that, they can do it that way. But I think right. what they they like testing themselves. They they really like um, you know, pitching themselves against see, mm -hmm. week after week after week to see if how they're doing in the scores or the quizzes and things. Mm -hmm. And some of these quizzes get really really tough. Mm -hmm. I am never it never ceases to amaze me how much knowledge is in our community. Right, really deep deep. They're geeks. You uh -huh. know, for the, for the most part, and even the guys that come in and and they're they're kind of whiskey curious, they're just coming in. The newer guys, they very quickly learn mm -hmm. because yeah. there's they maybe just get a wee bit of inspiration from one of these questions and they go off and learn something. Or this is this time goes on the amplification and the speed at which you can pick up knowledge and 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 develop a palate is um, faster than it used to be, definitely. And also, what's wonderful is people. It's this less less orthodox or oh, everwind has uh, made a wee donation. Thank, thank, thank you everyone. very much, my friend. Thank you, everyone, for sending across your virtual dram. And I can see that I've missed one a wee bit yeah, further yeah. up from, uh, let's catch up. Tomato, Tomato Yoshi. Yoshi. Now, I think that's Yoji. Yoji, is from it? From Texas, Yoji. yes. Right, too. Uh, thanks, gents, for a great evening. Uh, Tomato Yoshi, if that is you, Yoji, I hope it is. Thank you so much for your virtual dram, my friend. Really nice guy, I, a guy I got, had the pleasure of meeting when I was out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's jump in to Thanks, see what the answer is for uh, Ralphie's first review on YouTube. It is, in fact, Maybe Glenora. It's, it's Glen Breton. It's Glen Breton, Glenora Distillery. Yeah. And that was the what distillery. What happened to the what first happened? one? Right. The very reason 
I, I actually, it only just been introduced in through a London, and I bought it from the Whiskey Exchange, was the 10-year-old Glen, Glen Breton, because it, I'd become aware through Glasgow's Whiskey Club of the story that SWA. Scotch Whiskey Association, and I can see the logic, but that decision wasn't made sympathetically in fact i think it was a careless decision that cost a lot of money that didn't need to be wasted um but glen breton was a small distillery a time when very few distilleries were starting up distillers were starting up and it's in nova scotia 60 miles south of inverness canada and it was saying glen breton made in Canada and had a great big red maple leaf on it. And the Scotch Whiskey Association took exception, as far as I am aware. Covering my ass there, see that? Yes. How, you know, you, that's what you do after 10 years, yeah. cover your ass. In my, as far as I am aware, in my opinion, took exception to the word, word using the word Glen because they considered that people could mistake it for Scotch Whiskey, despite the fact that it was made in Nova Scotia, Canada. Now, the reason I think that the Scotch Whiskey Association challenged that as vigorously as they did was they thought that this could be a gateway opportunity for la far larger producers in Canada to then start putting Glen and Ben into their products. They wanted to make an example of it. So they wanted to make an example of Glen Breton, which was a small distillery. Now, eventually, the Scotch Whiskey Association, after spending a lot of money, lost their case. But put it this way, Glen Breton distillery didn't win. Uh, it didn't do them any good. I think it was a real shame. I think there could have been a better judgment call. I, I ex totally accept the fact that the Scotch Whiskey Association do a damn good job at chasing down the routine fakers. Where are you off to? You I'll fed one, up here. One second. No, I don't <laughs> want. You're in full flight. In full I'm flight, right? Yeah. Don't rush back. I'll manage, right, Theo? So what really pissed me off was that it was kind of an insensitivity. It was almost dismissing the, the powerful and important Scottish connection and Scottish diaspora who retain a huge amount of their culture whilst living in Canada. And this is important. It's very important to Scottish identity. But there's this constant theme on and off in Scotch whisky because it's mainly centred centered and administered through London and through corporate offices is that the Scottishness is there purely as a convenient hook and a feature for marketing and therefore you get almost this parody which is completely out of context for contemporary international outward looking scottish culture boom ran over well it wasn't really a rant it was just a a perspective a spe perspective and opinion what happened to the first video that wasn't glenn breton what was it, it was a talisker was it, was it? talisker 10 year yeah. old um and I decided, well, I'm going to put my video up, but nobody's heard of Glen Breton, so I better put that, although it's the first recorder, I'll put that up second, and I'll put Talisker up first, because everybody's heard of Talisker, and the folk in the whiskey club said, well, why don't you review Talisker first, because you've just bought a bottle, and it's really nice stuff. So that's how that happened. In the 15th of February, 2009. But, but we, if we want to see the Talisker video, though, it's still there. It's just not your first. It's not. I mean, I've re-reviewed Talisker since then. But I've reviewed review number one at ralphie.com is Talisker 10 year old. At ralphie.com. At, Ralph, at my channel, which hasn't changed. Uh -huh. The second review, which was the first I recorded, was Glenn Breton. I see. Now I understand. That's what it is. Now I understand. George Kaplan is thinking, you're so good. He's wondering why you don't have your own show. Good at what? <laughs> at this. They're obviously, no. en they're obviously you know enjoying what? you. I'm really, really enjoying it. W what is truly wonderful is that the internet, through its appearance, and these are still the early days, by the way, it hasn't come under the full mailed fist of censorship yet. They're desperately trying to do it, but they're basically trying to pound down a rubber ball. It's... it's you know, as much as they, they bounce, it's like, it's like a Disney cartoon or a Bugs Bunny cartoon yeah, where back. he kind of hits one bit of the map and the other pops up and they hits the other bit and a bit. That's the internet's like that. 
once something goes on the internet that the 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 authorities really don't want out there, the the quick people will just simply offload it and then fire it back on again, and and then people link to it. Millions can link within a minute. Um, it's so fast and so versatile, and it gives a very powerful collective voice to people who otherwise, without the internet, would remain completely and totally anonymous here, here, in whatever absolutely. their interest. Yeah, yeah. And it's taken the the fashion industry very quickly to very quick to build bridges, but the the Scotch whisky industry is very traditional. It's very conservative, and It's a wee bit stodgy. Yeah, and I, and I think it takes somebody of your character. Your, no, no, your, just not just single me Everybody's character, because what's really nice is that all the different personalities who come along and add positively to the wider conversation, that's the word, conversation, whether it be blog or vlog, everybody has a contribution and so much of that contribution is well worth watching. And guys, I come along and I watch other folks' stuff and I learn from it. I don't leave loads of messages and all the rest of it. Can you imagine how 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 you would make some of these creators days if you left a wee message saying, Oh, I enjoyed this one, Ralphie? Yeah, but you know, I mean, I've, I'm busy. I'm busy, and I, I don't want to. Don't want to be. I'm not. I don't want to overegg the pudding. Uh -huh. You know, let's just let's. We're all. It's all in our. You like. You like your discretion. Okay, let's go. And and we've got two questions left. Let's fire through them because I've got yes. something. I've poured into a glass that I'm not going to make Ralphie drink, but I would like his opinion. He would, as he knows and swells it about. Okay, can I lift up go. now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can. So we look. Yeah, that's. There's a lot of rye in that. It does have a bit of Ryan in it. Uh, it's quite awesome. a lot of Ryan in that. Anyway, the quiz quality. question is Ralphie, the second whiskey that, tuber guest on your channel. Is that is if that, so? Who was the first? Does this remind me of Rutten House? Eric, you are a big guy. This does this is, remind me of Rutten House? This is what the Scotch test dummies call the bottle of wow. Bottle of wow, right? Uh -huh. too. And this is why I'm not going to ask you to drink it. Right. 69.7%. Oh, for ADV. goodness sake. Don't put a wick in that and light it. That's right. Elijah you need Craig, to call the this fire is, brigade. This is ACBP, Elijah Craig Barrowproof. This was gifted to me by Scott and Bart from the Scottish Test Dummies. You um, generous guys. And whose glasses we were sipping out of. I'll have a wee sip. Tonight we've got the warrior glasses here from the, the from the dummies as well. Um, oh, it's evaporating rapidly. Where's my water? Where's my spoon? <laughs> there you go. I like the the slight ch pepper, chili, heat, and jalapeno savoury note, linseed, cardamom, clove. I'll leave it at that. Would you need a wee bit of time with something like that, right? You do. It's quite anaesthetic in the tongue. Sixty-nine point seven percent. Sixty-nine point seven percent. That changed. That changed. That and the uh, Jack Daniel's single barrel barrel proof changed my mm -hmm. perception of. American whiskey, American bourbon specifically. Mm -hmm. Well, it's basically an endorsement of what can be produced but often isn't. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, well, they do, they do this batch by batch. It changes the ABV, but changes mm -hmm. each time. And some people kind of have their favourites on mm -hmm. which batch and things. Mm -hmm. I've got another one downstairs I haven't opened yet. Mm -hmm. um, but that I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in fairness, when I've been in the US and particularly in, in Las Vegas, and, uh, you know, the, the, the availability of bourbon is quite good there. Uh, there has been some really, really interesting stuff. And it's actually been really nice when you're in the country, you're in to drink their indigenous spirit because it's part of the flavor of the experience. So if it be, I'm in Italy, um, say down at Pompeii or whatever, I'll be limoncello because the, the nuns there produce fantastic limoncello with the nice green oil in the top. It's Providence. And, isn't it? uh, yeah. No, no, it's fine. No, it's oh, all right, all right then. I'm going to so give him a wee bottle away with him well, so that he can. He's getting a wee bottle. Whatever his destination is tonight, he can have. Yes. I'm not. I'm not going to refuse. It would be rude. Guess what's appearing in a recycled review soon? It's only a wee drip of this gorgeous. Wee You've been very there. generous, by the way. Thank you very much. I'll enjoy this. this is, I'll this share is, this that. This is not generous. This is just. I will share that with a friend who's a distiller, and I gave him. We shared uh, the the. Um, the 12-year-old 
Canadian one, and I will share that as well because it's Fantastic. good to have that conversation. This is sort of. But you, you detected the rye, didn't you, on the nose? The, the, the rye is immediate. It's very visible. Um, and I say that's got that sort of dry, dry note and that intensity, that resinous, dry, slightly, slightly rose water aromatic of Rittenhouse. But and yet when I sit with it, I get so much confectionery out of it. 69.7%. Well, ABV. I've added and all that huge, intense wood spice and condensed cola cubes, which is a confectionery. Yep, yep. So this, the, the wee Aquavite sticker is just to remind you who it gave. Oh, wow. I think that's the trouble with samples. You often get samples, sometimes it takes you a while to get around to them. And because it's written on the bottle where it is, but you forget who it's come from. Get that. There you go. Get fancy labels. Oh, Ralph's not getting the fancy labels, but I'm, you know, here at Aquavite, I've got fancy self-printed labels. Yeah, folk put me the, to shame. I tell you what, wait, wait, wait till you see like my, my fancy labels. labels. I'll have my wee printing. Scott's reminding us that it's 12 year old, it's age stated as well. It's 12 year old. Yeah, it right, does so have an age statement. It does say I'm here. Good. Can I mark, if you've got a pen, I want to mark that down. 12 is a really, it's a really solid age for bourbon. For, yeah, for bourbon. Virgin oak. Yep. And again, there's um, so much the integrity of the contributing grains, grains, but ultimately it's the cask that carries it. It's the carries the cask that carries the customer of the mash bill. Thank you very much. I'll put this aside. You're welcome. The collectible souvenir coin thing. Let's rattle these last two questions and let you guys off the quiz hook. Which of these is not an Indian single malt? This is normally the type of question you get on the Aquaviti quiz at right, the end, sure. okay? Which of these is not an Indian single malt producing distillery, okay? A, Rampur, B, McDowell's, or C, Blue Imperial? Uh huh. Is not. So two of these do produce single malt whiskey. I'm not mm -hmm. speaking about Indian whiskey, which is often right. made from uh, molasses. Uh huh. I'm speaking about they actually make single malt there. Mm -hmm. Rampur, A, McDowell's, B, or C, Blue Imperial? And watch these folk. Let's see how they got on with this because it's this is a bit of a banana skin. This is a tough mm -hmm. question, right? Is it right? Yeah. Tough question. Yeah. There you go. A few folks swithering. Everybody thinks it's McDowell's. Uh-huh. Because it's not a sounds Irish, doesn't it? It right. does sound it doesn't sound an Indian or <laughs> or gin type of name. Of course, India is very synonymous with gin. Yes, of course, yeah. So let's have a wee look. Quickly. Do you know that with with the Cadenheads still do it, not very often, they actually use saffron in the higher strength, better quality Cadenheads gin because saffron as a spice is so expensive that during the British Empire, when the officers were became aware that their, their gin was getting watered down, they actually had a little card with the exact shade of yellow and they'd have that yellow from a certain variety of saffron. They'd put the saffron in the large bottle of gin, and then they would do a colour card check to make sure that their gin hadn't been tampered with. Wow. Yeah. In the words of Ralphie, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> it's lovely stuff, by the way. We didn't knock us back. So to tell you which is not a malt-producing Indian distillery then, it is, in fact... Blue Imperial. Imperial. Imperial Blue is an Indian whiskey, but it's made from molasses. It's the, one of the top selling whiskies in the world. Um, McDowell's, if I go back here, McDowell's uh, make, I think, the second best selling whiskey in the world. Uh -huh. uh, and Rampur, of course, we know is a malt distillery. Let's move on to question 10 real quickly, and then we can share how you've scored. Ralphie's video count on YouTube as of today is... 795 videos A, 899 videos B, or 995 videos C. So this is public videos. Uh -huh. He's told me what his actual number is. Yeah. And it's higher than what we can see. He's obviously got his wee hidden videos and so his wee private videos. A few videos. have probably been deleted, actually, and not, I've not even noticed. But for breach of something. He's, um, uh, you know, one of those numbers is correct, and any of those numbers is staggering, right? That's a lot of booze, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's 10 years. It's, it's over. You've spread uh, it's, uh, it. You've yeah. amortized it over 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. 
But do you know, looking back, the this self-funding hobby, there's no doubt about it, the opportunity to taste so many spirits from so far wide a range across the planet. Um, and, and I think I'm saying I have seen almost all of them. Have they? Oh my <laughs> goodness. I hope you Rasta. recover. I hope you recover. That must have been a quite a shift. But I think what's really useful for folk is to have someone pass these reviews who isn't a master blender, who doesn't have the super sensitive nose and the ultra sophisticated palate, and who hasn't been orthodoxly trained to be overly analytical in the approach to smell and taste. To have an ordinary Joe Bloggs who's just done an, a prolonged apprenticeship, and there's more and more of us out there, which is all good. That's a great way to look at it. Yes. So from that boon of having 12 with the soda water or whatever you're putting in it mm -hmm. to here now is a tonic is water. Quite a lengthy, a lengthy <laughs> apprenticeship. And of course, I'm going to share with you now, Jason Coates, it does not include his fitness channel. It only includes his whiskey videos. Unbelievably, question 10 is actually Ralphie has live and public on his channel right now 995 videos. He's five away from a thousand videos. A thousand videos. Public videos. A thousand videos, mock mates. And I haven't been sued yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Listen, well. I, I that, think... that was wonderful. Let, share your scores. Let us know how you got on with that. It was just a bit of fun. Yeah. And also, many of you tune in and they hang around to, in a hope that we can have a quiz. There's uh, uh, Gigina. P Putu, I don't even know how to pronounce your uh -huh. name, my friend, but you've scored 8 out of 10. It's fantastic. Sam England, 7 out of 10. Uh, Daniel Vermas, 8 out of 10. Alistair Gray, 8 out of 10. Look at these scores. A very knowledgeable folk. But not you, 7 Roughly. out of 10? 7 out of 10. So, so 7 out of 10 is your pass mark tonight. It's usually 5 out of 10 is your pass mark. So what we, what we can say is that yeah. is not just knowledgeable about whiskey, not a pool of knowledge yeah. about whiskey, but knowledge about what you've created over the last 10 years. And it's it's a phenomenon, and it's wonderful to yeah. behold. And I sat with Ralphie at the old and rare, and uh -oh. I told him, I said, "Listen, if we when we talked about this, if we do that, I think you'll be surprised mm -hmm. because people are grateful and people love you for what you've done and what you've brought over the last ten years." And I think we do. And it doesn't Just matter. So long as, I don't care as so long as you're drinking good stuff. We be fussy. We, be fussy. We don't need to agree. We don't need to agree Bill with Bill. you. Bill, my friend Hello, from Bill. California, he's yeah. actually a physical friend of mine for the last 25 yeah. or more years, more than that now. Amazing night. Thanks to Roy for introducing me to Ralphie and for transla translating Mike's Bathy. He thought, he thought, live from Mike's Bathy, he thought. Bathy. For me, congrats on 10 years. As a Californian, he didn't know it was the Manx Bothy. Bothy. Yes. yes. Bill, thanks for your dram, big guy, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in May. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Our comments night. keep going. My goodness. The, listen, if we let them, Have you had many people tune in then? Well, because I can read all this is like a blooming. Well, it's dropped below 300 now. We, it? we were way above 300. Right, Joe. And it, there's no doubt this has been by far the, busy, the busiest V pub by is a it? huge, huge envelope. Yeah, huge. Oh, margin. thanks for watching, folks. I really yes. appreciate it. The busiest, thanks for popping along. The busiest ever V pub has ever been. Right, Can you so imagine if we'd built this up, if we'd marketed and told about people, it would be difficult to manage, I think. Matt Hill is saying, absolutely great V-Pub, congratulations and thank you for the 10 years and Roy for taking me from a drinker of whiskey into a geek Hello, sort Matt. of. Matt, I hope you're enjoying your geekery sort of. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much for, for your dram. So will we raise a wee glass just to say we thank you to glass. Go, we'll do the suburban is here. Anything, well, do you know what we need to do? We need to, to give them all an opportunity to take a screenshot. We need to let them allow them to take right, a picture. So, okay, so okay. we'll just kind of get together and go. Slant you, folks. Thank you so One, much. One, two, three, cheese. Say more moments. More moments. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. Ralph and I are going to hang out here, finish the rest of this whiskey, and just kind of wind down from what's been a yes. wonderful, wonderful opportunity for me, a fantastic event. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for inviting me. You're not going to get sued now, are you? I don't mind. Thank you. Take care, you, folks. You don't mind, you would. Slant your vibe, everybody. Until next time. You can still keep the bottle of Rose Bank. I don't need, I've got two more left. Thank two you. more left. I'm Thank not planning you. to sell them. That's your Rose Bank. But I'm going to take this away with me. 
because I've got I've got folk who need to taste this, no problem, so they can learn from it. And I need to contact Kilkerman and ask them to put age statements on their whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> even so if it is the waggy finger, waggy even, even if it is three years. Until next time, folks, you know where to find this guy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roy. Good night, folks. Sleep tight. <laughs>